Okay. Should be loading it up. Let's just um add a camera. Oh, I can't do that. Okay. Okay. Now I can't hear myself. myself. Not, Not good. good. <sighs> yeah, that totally happened. All right, it should be live. I can't seem to use a um quick source. Let's see if this op if I open that up and then I set that down. Close all these windows in the background. Gotta make sure I talk to Jenny later about that thing, about the rules. Okay, it looks like it's streaming it well. <laughs> Holy shit, a video game. Okay. Okay, so now it's black screened. So now if I open it full screen, then it should be good. Just check back. And it's still got black bars. Okay. Or maybe that's because of the dashboard. Is it does it still have does it have black bars for you all for you Madrai? Or is that just the dashboard for me? It doesn't okay, that's probably just me then. Alright. I'll just um go ahead and get back to what I wanted to uh attemptively stream this. I was going to go ahead and um, stream some games that I see on game replays because I play almost every day if everyone notices and I even got to level 9. I did get to 10 but then the game dropped me for some reason. So I did get to level 9 American, level 6 Wehrmacht, 6 Brits and 5 Panzer Elite. Still hate the Panzer Elite but what else? Um, I was going to go ahead and stream some casts of some games that I found. This one is owned by a sync hacker, owned a sync hacker, not owned by, owned a sync hacker, and this was on the 3rd of March this year, and this is between The Dark Knight Rises and Akasi, or Akasi, I assume that's how you pronounce it. Let's just load the game up and let's see how they did. Apparently, The Dark Knight Rises or Akasi believed that um, the other was a sync hacker, we'll probably see. Uh, I usually like to look at these games to check because sometimes people do sync hack in this game and sometimes people do map hack very it's very sad that it's actually able to happen less because it's on relic servers once Company of Heroes 2 comes out on Steam and it's using Steam servers like they promised then uh, that won't be happening as much let's just see it start alright so right now we have Americans vs. Wehrmacht let's turn off Fog of War Alright, so we're going to start from the American's point of view. It looks like he's starting with a barracks. Not a forward barracks, or kind of forward, I guess. Uh, he's putting it in a location that's, I guess, easier for a forward reinforcement point. His Wehrmacht opponent, uh, Akasi, is going with two piles start, and he's not using the second pioneer to actually build that, to build his own Wehrmacht quarters. On the other side, the engineers that just popped out of the um just popped out of the base going ahead and capping and he has his first rifle producing. Farmot core is complete over here, and his capping is cut off. Interesting that he didn't actually build the Wehrmacht Quarters with his second pioneer and instead used it like an like a second engineer and just went straight to capping. Not something that I usually notice because usually when I see that I usually see two pioneers building the the Wehrmacht Quarters so they can get their uh, first Volksgrenadier out. Speaking of the first Volksgrenadier, it's almost uh, produced. Yes, sir. Volksgrenadiers in the original in the actual war were actually just people who were um soldiers. They didn't get a lot of combat training. That was more the grenadiers. But doing the Company of Heroes let's play I have to I kinda of not had to, but I learned this. Is those riflemen going for the cutoff or not? Something I don't like about Ooh in first engagement. Something I don't like about Longras is the fact that this building and there it goes. 
the Wehrmacht have a major habit of going for this building effect. First off, let me just lower some of my sound quality because everything is like really high. <laughs> okay, back to this. The Wehrmacht on Longriz like to go for this building right here, this strong house, because this strong house can defend this v this um, munitions point right here, can defend this right here, and it can defend this fuel point right here, and it can kind of babysit the cutoff for the player at the south. That's why usually with my first rifle I rush this house. Um, either I rush this house or I rush this house, because this house defends the plus 16 munitions right here. Uh, which these engineers are capping. Now those riflemen going long distance is interesting because they're actually doing some pretty good damage to those Volksgrandeers, but riflemen do have damage modifiers when they get to close range. He's holding off those Volks though. That's good, but here comes the MG. Standard thing from Vol from, Mer from Wehrmacht on this map is to hold that building and then move the MG up. Standardly, if you're fighting someone and they don't do that, then you're probably fighting a player that's not very good, to be completely honest. <laughs> oh, but that MG actually opens up on the engineers on the other side, giving the rifleman a chance to flank it if they actually would fucking move. We have um, some riflemen moving up here. There was a mine that was about to go down the cutoff, but they're not going to do that. Double MG start from uh, the Wehrmacht player. Those riflemen do get suppressed. Uh, they're probably going to have to retreat. They're very low health. Not very good for them. And that other MG is actually opening up. I think those riflemen did complete their mission, though, considering the fact that they did actually uh, decap the cutoff, basically meaning that now he's now his opponent is not getting um, it's not getting resources at the moment from this entire right hand side. But we have some wire going down. Probably keep some flanks from coming up. And the strong house was left. And but he's going back into it probably to cut probably to stop these riflemen from attacking those pioneers and to babysit this point right here. Because like I said, this strong house right here can babysit this point right here. If the MG gets enough line of sight bonus. As you can see the MG gunner is sitting right here. You can see him in the house right there. On the left hand side we have a small engagement. The MG opens up on those riflemen that are trying to attack the Pioneer. Probably a bunker's going to go down there in a second. I'd recommend the Dark Knight Rises to go ahead and start getting some grenades to take care of these uh, things in the these in these uh, MGs in the buildings. Those those riflemen are getting shredded up, low health everywhere. Definitely going to have to go for a triage soon. But he hasn't actually built anything else. Is he um? I don't really notice him building anything in his base. In Pioneers versus Engineers, usually the Engineers can win. It depends completely on crits and, uh... Ooh. Something went down. I believe it... Yep! It was the, uh... It was a grenade, I believe, went and hit this, uh... Building right there, that strong house. Killed the engine... Killed the MG in there. Now these riflemen are about to go ahead and pull a huge flank on that MG. And that other rifleman squad is actually going to get unsuppressed in a second, and there they go, they're unsuppressed. These Volks Grenadiers are sitting here and they're just trying to, I think they're going to try and defend that MG. These other Volks are being reinforced, they can't really get back into the, and there goes the grenade that kills the MG. Now those riflemen are probably going to try to recrew it and then get out of there really quickly, but that can't now. Now they can't. One man down, that means that that entire rifleman will then turn to an MG squad. Not good. Not a good choice. But we have a sniper out now, probably to stop these riflemen. And the MG was left, so now it'll probably be, yep, it's going to be picked up by these Volks. And the MG is still there. The problem was that the MG that was in this building, the reason why he can't recruit that, if you're not, no, if you don't understand, the reason why he can't recruit that MG is because of the fact that that MG was in a building when it died. Why are these riflemen not going up high? They're, they have the building. They can just go and flank these bitches, if I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, but these riflemen are in green cover, so they're not going to get suppressed as easily. Even though the suppression shots, if you're looking at it right, the suppression shots, it's just hitting the ground. It's not even shooting at them. <laughs> they're not even taking... They're, they're, they're still taking damage. Those grenades are doing nice, and there goes the Volk, squ Volk Squad, and the, these other riflemen are flanking this MG. Not going to be good for this MG. It's going to take really a lot of damage at close range with those damage modifiers the riflemen get. 
And vet one for those riflemen. But still, only three men in that squad. That's not good. That means that they still can't recruit that MG, so it's just going to keep getting recruited and recruited and recruited. Now these other riflemen are moving up to try and attack these guys. They have to get rid of that sniper. That sniper's going to start doing a lot of manpower damage if they don't kill him really quickly. And those other riflemen are about to go down, probably about to go down. Went for a grenade, and there it goes. Wasn't worth it. Riflemen just to kill a... Okay, they killed... Good, they killed the sniper. That Now that assault was kind of semi-useful. But at the end of the day... And these pioneers are just idle. Um, at the end of the day, that was not a very useful loss. Losing a rifleman just to try and throw a grenade on an MG. Not really good. Because he says he's bored. That's quite an asshole thing to say. <clears throat> that means that now... Uh, Dark Knight Rises is down to two rifles. Three rifles? Three rifles and no engineers. One, yep, three, yep, three rifles, no engineers. That's not good. He just produced another rifle, probably to re, <laughs> probably to help the fact that now he lost his old one. And Akasi made another sniper. Um, in the long run, making two snipers like that not super helpful. I guess he knows. At the end of the day, he knows that his opponent doesn't have anything to counter snipe with and is really not going to be able to deal with these snipers. On top of that, he's lost his engineers. Now, why Dark Knight Rises hasn't created any more engineers as of late, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, those flamer pyos should have actually just go ahead and just went ahead and rushed that rifle squad that was in the building. Fla pi um, flamers do more damage against units that are in buildings. These riflemen are flanking those pyos though, and they're going to go ahead and attack. Ooh, that sniper could go down. That'd be four. That'd be 680 manpower down the drain, and there it goes. That's not good. And bars popped. Right there, nice engagement to pop bars against these Volks. They're going to tear the Volks apart. Probably going to kill them off. There goes another Volks. This isn't good for, uh... Akasi isn't doing too hot. He's, he went and got a med bunker, which is good. He went with the med bunker. He'll be able to deal with the fact that he's uh, having heavy casualties. But now he's lost his Volks, so, and he's lost a lot of Pioneers. Now all he has is these guys out here scouting about. And his opponent has a bunch of riflemen. This MG, this soul MG, is not going to deal with the stuff much longer. Good, and he's and he has and something that you always want to remember when you play Co. Kill medics like it, they're nothing, because they are nothing. They are your they are your thing to kill. Another sniper. That's his third sniper. That's that's like what nine? That's like a thousand a thousand twenty manpower right there, in us in the form of a sniper. And it, he made another rifle squad. One, two, three, four, five. Five rifle... Oh! No wonder he made the fifth rifleman. I don't know why he didn't retreat that rifle squad when it was at no health in one man when there's a sniper running about, but whatever. I guess he just thought the casualty would work for him. Really, I'm not seeing sync hacking so much here, as much as I'm just seeing idiocy. <sighs> he finally made some more engineers, at last. Uh, doesn't look like uh, his opponent is really rebuilding much of anything, though. He built a lot of mines, though, I'll say that. He built mines in a lot of places that would be bad for riflemen to walk up on. Especially considering the fact that his... Flamethrowers on the engineers? I know that I just cut myself off, but... Flame... Double snipers. Okay. That's what his plan was. Great master plan. Snipers sure do have a lot of health. You sure did lose those last two guys. Um, totally not because, you know guys kind of shooting at them, and the fact that they have a piss poor at best. Did he think the flamer engineer would actually kill a guy in a bunker? Really? Okay, those 
pl pl please retreat those engineers. Please retreat those engineers. That's 140 manpower and 50 munitions down the drain if you don't retreat those engineers. Yeah, that that grenade doesn't really do shit against the against that against that bunker, does it? And there goes the engineer to a mine on retreat. Dark Knight Rises is doing the right thing in the long run. He is flanking a lot. He is doing a lot of damage. But, and Akasi calls him a noob. Akasi, I don't think you're really in the correct position to be calling people noobs, if I'm completely honest. You're using double sniper spam and an MG to hold off this American player. Now, while well, that's commendable in the long run to actually beat an American player using a single using a single MG and double snipers, that is very commendable. Blitzkrieg Doctrine doesn't do shit if you don't have anything to really fight off with. Now, here comes the stew. He's lucky that his American opponent has actually spent a lot of manpower rebuilding units constantly. I don't even think that he went for stickies. This stew is actually going to do a lot of damage. Blitzkrieg Doctrine is something I've always noticed in um, lower level wear play. It's a, it's a commonality because Blitzkrieg Stormtroopers are very good at attacking. I think this is where... Yep, he's getting stickies now. He's just teching stickies. Why? I'll never know. He's not going to finish it. That stew is going to... That stew, while I like to just call it a giant hunk of scrap metal with a dick on its face, that stew will actually sit there and can kill that barracks pretty well. Okay, those riflemen killed pioneers. Good job. Now you've lowered his his force a little bit more. Kill those snipers, and you'll do even more damage. Because double snipers really doesn't do shit. All right, he might get those stickies because it's gonna take a minute for that stew to reload. He might just get them in time. Yep, he just got he just got the stickies at the last second. But it doesn't matter now. Look at that, you have an MG on those rifles, and they're going to get sniped on retreat. That's so much manpower damage. And you know what I, like, what I dislike about Company of Heroes? I've always disliked... I, I don't like it even in this match. It's a perfect example. Snipers can cloak in the middle of a goddamn field. Look at that. Look at those two snipers are just standing there. Just moving around. Just move the riflemen around, please. And make some damn buildings. Dark Knight Rises. Make some buildings. Christ! Your opponent is sniper spamming you to death. Sniper spamming you to death. This isn't a this isn't a good strategy. This is a bullshit strategy. And look, he's about to get grins out. He's about to get some grins. And those grins will do massively, massively rapey things to your rifle. There they go. There go the grenadiers. Now he has a fighting force against you. And double sniper. Just kill the goddamn snipers. Just kill the fucking snipers, for the love of Christ. And you have a stew in your base killing everything. You have a stew in your base killing everything. What are you planning to do? Great. Good good job. You, you, you've killed the MG. You destroyed it. Good, good, good. Kill the sniper. It's going to kill your your rifles, your rifleman right there. Almost did friendly fire. Oh, there you go. You killed it. Good job. I'll give him that. That was a good. That was a good. That was a good kill. Now he went infantry doctrine against this blitzkrieg doctrine. That was a good choice, but uh, yeah, you don't really have the map for this. Now he's getting base rushed by two stews. I don't think there was a sink hacker at all in this match. I think it was really just an idiot who didn't build buildings, and another guy who just adva who took advantage of a doctrine that the Wehrmacht have. Okay, now he's gotten in he's gotten rangers. Good. Now he has some form of AT. Double rangers, double double bazookas on those rangers. That might just save him this match. But those stews are going to do a lot of damage. But actually, wow, wow, just, 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 just wow. You're gonna lose those engineers. That's like what the fifth engineer lost this game. A lot of right, a lot of snipers and engineers have died this game. This game makes me want to cry. 
guess what? Rangers are great AT. They can't really do much against two stews with no AT support. No formal AT support. Now he's done good. He's done good overall. He cut off he cut off his opponent. So his opponent wasn't getting resources. His opponent went Blitzkrieg, so he knows he went Blitzkrieg, or maybe he doesn't, I don't know. He might th th looking at how he's playing, he might not know what Blitzkrieg doctrine is. Um He's done all right so far. He used that off map to somewhat effectiveness with killing the MG. And another sniper. Another fucking sniper. And no one's recruited this MG yet. No one's gotten that bar. Or this one, I bet. Where was the other one? No one's gotten this bar either, right here. That was from way earlier in the game. Do you know that a bar if you add a bar to a rifleman squad, because riflemen have like four weapon slots, bars take up two of them when you when you purchase them as a global upgrade. If you pick up bars and you actually like you know start using them, and, and he doesn't realize that his opponent is actually keeping the fight over here, so that way he can just get more grinds out. But did you know that if you actually give a rifleman more bars than just the one or two that they get naturally, then you can actually sit there and have a full suppression force right there. It's just as good as an MG. Now stop that bunker, shoot at it, shoot at the bunker and you will stop it. Good. Now the bunker's stopped. Now stop those, please don't lose those those Vet 1 rifles. Please don't lose those Vet 1 rifles. And, okay, good, Stu's dead. Okay, now use those two bazookas that you have left to actually attack this Stu and basically you've won the match because there's nothing else to, he can really do. And you got Vet 2 on one rifle, don't, don't lose them. Don't lose the the Vet 2 rifle. Please don't lose the Vet 2 rifle. Double snipers, you're going to lose the Vet 2 rifle, aren't you? Because you are not paying attention. Okay, they missed. Good. They missed it again. Guess those snipers learned to, learn to snipe at the Academy of Stormtroopers. I don't even know. That Ranger was down to one man. Still, they haven't even gone past Tier 1. I don't even think... I don't even think he even... I... yeah. Yeah. That happened. He just lost these rifles right here. He just lost them. Ugh. So... No unit preservation. Uh... Vet 2... Two Vet 2 rifles! How the hell did he get two Vet 2 rifles with the amount of times he was suiciding them? Um, two vet two rifles, two snipers. We're still in tier one. Uh, multiple pioneers being built. Three snipers. Three snipers. Three snipers. Now I just go ahead and punch Akasi. Let's just look at his. Let's just look at his economy real quick. Three hundred fifty nine fuel. 328 munitions, 190, 200 manpower. Does he know how much manpower he's wasted making over seven snipers? Good fucking job, you idiot. <sighs> yeah, no sink hackers were in this game. Oh, look at that. He's finally built an armory. He's probably going to go for some infantry vet. Or maybe he'll go for sniper vet, which means support veterancy. Those snipers are going to die. Those grins are going to die. Those rangers are about to die. <sighs> rangers have elite armor. Do not rush rangers at snipers. Oh, he's finally retreating the snipers. He's going to lose one of them on retreat. He's going to lose one of them on retreat. He's going to lose one of them on... There he goes one of them on retreat. He's going to lose the second one on retreat. And oh, he didn't lose that one. Kill the kill the grin, please kill the grins. Kill the shoot at the grins. The grins were right in your retreat path. Kill them. Build some buildings from your goddamn base. Oh Jesus. Kill the medic. At least you know how to do that. Kill a medic. Good. Abuse the fact that medics die so quickly. Just kill those snipers. If he kills the snipers, that'll be good. Now he's gotten support unit vet. Yep, like I thought. 
Vet for his snipers. For his three snipers. I don't know what he plans to accomplish with this. He has no pant manpower, and he went for Blitzkrieg. <laughs> you have no manpower and went for Blitzkrieg. Look at that. He can't even make assault infantry. Or stews. He lost all of it on stews and snipers. But he knows his opponent hasn't made a barracks again, so it doesn't really matter. Great. You're spamming snipers at him. I hope he throws an artillery shell right on your snipers' heads. I would love to see that. And he just pulls a full retreat. What was the point? What was the goddamn point? He just moved onto those riflemen and then pulled a full fucking retreat. And lost another sniper. And lost the second one. Let's see if he loses the third one. Can he lose the third one? Uh-huh. And says, good. You aren't playing good, Akasi. Not at all. Losing most of the map. He didn't even OP his fuel or anything. Oh, he's finally escalating the skirmish phase. Now he's going straight. Oh, I see. He was. Here's his master plan. H listen to this one. Listen to this one. Here's his master plan. His master plan was to sit there and spam snipers early game, costing him 340 manpower per sniper. This is many minutes of this is many minutes of time per sniper. He spams snipers early game. Then he tries to use a med bunker to get Grins out, not realizing that he was losing most of his manpower in those snipers. So then he decides, I'll just mass up fuel, then I'll tech and get my snipers their first infantry vet. Then I'll tech up straight to getting my, s my tier 3 building. Even though I have no pioneers to build that tier bu 3 building with because they keep dying because I kept using them as scouting units. Then, then I'll get him with some... Panzer Command. Because look, like I thought, he's going to your four for Panzer Command. Then with Panzer Command, I will sit there and I will beat him because I will have tanks and he will have nothing. Look, now he's making a pioneer. And he put his Gren inside of the inside of his base. I wonder if he thinks the Gren can reinforce him there. It can't. Now he did do a good idea. Wow. They dropped that they dropped that bazooka instantly though. That's not that's usually not the case. Why he gave those Rangers SMGs as a waste of one hundred munitions at this point in the game, I never know. Funny thing you can do on this map. If you're at the if you're at the bottom, you can actually move your units into the guy's base if you just uh take those rangers that were standing right here. Oh well here they are right here, I'll just click on them. Take Dark Knight Rises as Rangers. You could actually attack the base by c going right past this, attack grounding this wall, going right past this, and then going right behind the bunker, and then just jump in his base, and you're there. Now the one good thing about... S I think he killed both... Pan both... yeah, he did. He killed both guys that uh, had bazookas, which means that now these Rangers have no AT form format no form of AT. And there goes the med bunker, so there goes his only way of producing Grens. And now here comes the Panzer Command. I assume that once he gets his first Panzer Command unit out, then... Oh, Akasi says GG. I wonder if that means... Yeah, he probably did quit. Oh. Or he's saying GG because now his opponent has no AT. And... Oh, actually... <laughs> Well, so busy yelling about how he's not doing anything, now he's actually getting Tank Depot out. So they both went for... He just cancelled the Tank Depot? Why? He better not be building another motherfucking rifle. He made a WSC... He made a WSC, a weapon support center, and then cancelled Tank Depot. He cancelled Tank Depot. Make a sniper out of that WSC. I fucking dare you. Make a sniper. <sighs> that sniper is still going to work on a lot of units, and there goes the little house that usually goes down the small arms fire. And there's another Akasi mine. 
Oh, and look at him, he's putting down mines of his own. How cute. Off-map combat group. Nice. Two, double Hellcat M8. And this is probably where Akasi quits out because... Yeah. Uh, you can't really beat that when you have a Panzer Command and what you're making... What is he making out of it? I bet it's going to be a Panther. Is it a Panther? Yeah, it is a Panther. And he has an Ostwind out with that one. Okay. Double Hellcat M8. Probably going to kill that Ostwin off. Wow, first shot kills the gunner on the M8 from the Ostwind. Now, M8s are not very good against Ostwinds. Uh, not at all. So, uh, yeah, kill the Ostwind and then basically that's it. And kill the MGs in the base, because that will be retribution for yours. Okay. Now he's killing the Panzer Command. It's going to take a minute to kill that Panzer Command. The Panzer Command has, the, uh, has a lot of health. Now, his opponent went for Assault Infantry, and he's getting a Panzer Shrek on them, but this isn't going to be useful. And there goes an off-map on the base in order to stop the, uh, in order to get rid of the MGs for the actual, for the rifle to get in. The Wehrmacht lost that last sniper that he had made. He put both of his, he put both of his Pioneers in the building, in his base. Not a smart idea, because units take more damage from being in a, oh, sink air. Detected. That therefore means that that was the end of the match. Because probably one of them drop hacked the other. Or sync hacked the other. At this point, this is where the sync hack came in. I doubt it was a sync error. I think the game just quit on them because they were just so stupid. Uh, overall, game wasn't that great. <laughs> if I could say if I could say that. Uh, the game wasn't that great. It wasn't good. Dark Knight Rises, not really a uh, good American player. I don't know what level this was of play. It probably was level 1 or 2, because that's where you usually see these type of tactics, is low-level play. In mid-level play, usually players won't be as stupid as these guys were. Akasi didn't go to tier 4 until way too late, then almost lost Assault Infantry, then lost many Pioneers, kept producing snipers. I don't even know what his point of producing so many snipers was. And yeah. Uh, whoever lost this doesn't really matter. Because you both lost. And uh, it wasn't a panther that he was making out of there. It was another Ostwind. Or he cancelled the panther and made an Ostwind. Why would you cancel a panther versus double Hellcat M8? I don't know. But he was going to make an Ostwind. Berg. Let's go ahead and um, let's let's go ahead and try another match. Let's see another replay from that guy off of GR the other today, this morning. At least GG. This one is a replay between Rax Stugs in Stags and Roll. Why? And I do I do stuff I do oh I do stupid stuff. <laughs> wow. This is gonna be interesting. Let's see what happens. Sturzdorf. <laughs> Not a big fan of Sturzdorf. It's a uh it's an interesting map at least. It's a very uh it it's a very industrial map. Uh in there's actually a map called Industrial. I think it's I think it's just called Industrial. Uh you can play on basic match. It's a very industrial map because it has a lot of it has a lot of uh shall I say what is it called? Um, it has a lot of houses. Shall I say, what is it called? Houses. Yeah, it has a lot of uh, buildings in it. So that way a lot of units can get into buildings and defend them. I really do think Sturzdorf should have been a 2v2 map. Like rec like um, Wolf Heise is or something like that. Because the amount of buildings, you would never have that many units in that many buildings. Unless you're putting snipers everywhere. Which, why would you put a sniper in a building? Because if you put a sniper in a building, then it's easy to get sniped or it can get grenaded and then get instantly killed. Yeah. 
So let's see. We're starting off with I do stupid stuff as the Panzer Elite versus uh his opponents Rax Stugs and Stags roll as the Americans. Now the Panzer Elite, the reason why I don't care much for them in general to play at least and to fight, uh, is that the Panzer Elite they start off with a with an interesting start. They actually they actually start with a vehicle when they start the game when they start the game. Uh, Panzer Elite Grenadiers, or Pegrens, as they're shortenedly called, actually are um very they're they're interesting. They get a lot of they get a lot of uh upgrades. They get three different upgrades. They get several different upgrades as far as weapons, and then they get one or two up a few upgrades in terms of their original gameplay. For example, Pegrens do not cap very fast, not at all. D okay, he must have um okay. He so his opponent is going for I I bet an aim strong strat. The aim strong strat is called bulletproof. Bulletproof is a strategy where you go three engineers straight into straight into rifles. So stag stug and roll. I can tell that he's making something out of that out of his barracks. Uh, so bulletproof was a strategy designed in order to actually defeat the Panzer Elite because the Panzer Elite had a major habit of attacking the Americans and always killing them. So these Pegrens are going up as an frontal assault force to cut off to probably do a base pin on these engineers. Engineers can actually do pretty good damage against Pegrens because they are three men in each squad. And because these engineers are in green cover, these Pegrens aren't going to do much of anything. Engineers can do at least health damage. Now, they're not going to kill a Pegren, at least until they get flamers. But engineers can at least do some damage. Now, here comes some rifle to back up these engineers, and they're probably going to go ahead and attack these Pegrens early on. They do have some support coming in, but it's coming a bit late because I do stupid stuff. Went ahead and made another uh, swim wagon to actually start helping the cap, because swim wagons do cap very quickly. We have some engineers capping around the map. They're about to go ahead. These engineers are about to attack that swim wagon. On this side, we have the the support Panzer Grenadiers did come up in time, and now they're about to support their uh, G43 brothers. The G43, uh, very useful. Ooh. Very nice micro from sh from uh, I do stupid stuff. He's uh, keeping those riflemen and those engineers from attacking the pegrens, and they're losing health very rapidly. Nice. <laughs> now those engineers are attacking that swim wagon over on the left, on the right side, and they did do some health damage to it, but not enough. Now we have some third a third Panzer Grenadier squad uh, coming out of the coming out of the base. Probably going to go ahead and attack these engineers over here. Double engineers versus one single Panzer Grenadier, however, will kill the Panzer Grenadier. Uh, usually, an engineer can at least kill the Panzer Grenadier if they have like three NGs, two NGs, anything like that. Multiple NGs can kill Panzer Grenadier. Now, this is a plus uh, 16 fuel right here. This plus 16 fuel takes a, you know, a bitch to capture, if I'm completely honest. They take a long time to capture. Now this swim wagon right here might go down because it's losing health very quickly and it's getting attacked by riflemen. Not very good. Now those engineers are attacking these pegrens and these pegrens aren't opening up yet. But now they open up on the engineers and those engineers are taking a lot of health damage. Gotta retreat. They won't wipe them on retreat unless that swim wagon blocks... Nope. <laughs> Thank God, because that engineer would have been dead if uh, that swim wagon had blocked him off on retreat. Now we have these and these riflemen actually taking on the um taking on the points that the engineers weren't able to get earlier because of the swim wagons dickery. Speaking of dickery, there it is again. <laughs> now here's some Panzer Grenadiers just standing around. They're kind of idling, if I'm completely honest. They're not doing enough. They're not doing enough attack damage. They're not attacking enough. Um, they aren't they aren't moving on the they aren't on the offensive enough. Is what is my problem with it. They they cut him off from the right side, which is good. It's keeping him from getting fuel, which is keeping him from teching up straight to tank depot, which is part of the strategy. So he, this Panzer Elite player, uh, I do stupid stuff, is actually being quite intelligent, unlike his name would imply. Now his opponent, now I do stupid stuff, just went for the um, scorched earth tactics. Very overused, for my, in my opinion. Very overrated <laughs> tactic for the Panzer Elite. I think uh, tank destroyers and Luftwaffe tactics are much more... Well, Luftwaffe is actually the most overrated, but tank destroyer is much more useful in the long run, especially if you're going against the bulletproof strategy. 
from whenever I've played Panzer Elite. Now these G43s do have the ability to slow, they have an instant suppression ability, similarly to the how bars have the ability to suppress. And there go those Flamer Engineers. Panzer Elite have Elite Armor. Elite Armor in Company of Heroes basically means that they have a, that they take more damage from snipers and from flamers. That's why the aim strong strategy is a very high ammunition strategy. Very use, very um, heavy on the flamer usage. Very religious with it. Now we have another swim wagon over here. Now he built his uh, camp graph company over here, and now he's going straight for Panzer Jaeger Command. I main American, if you don't know. American play. It's very easy to tell when someone's gone camp. Comp Graf Company, and then they went um straight for uh, the Panzer Jaeger Command. Panzer Jaeger Command is the commonality between p all Panzer Elite players, in my opinion, and they really need to stop doing it. It's too easy to to recognize. I could have told you that he was going for Panzer Jaeger Command, and I could have done it with my eyes closed. It's that common. Now he's going moving. Now he's leaving both these Schwims kind of undefended, and he's letting them kind of sort of just not get healed. It's not a very good idea when you have swim wagons. Those riflemen right there are retreating. Probably got hit by... Yet yeah, they did. They got hit by the uh, bi the booby trap. It's a good thing they used the riflemen to, cap to get that, though, because the booby trap would... um would, The riflemen getting hit by that is not as bad as flamer engineers getting hit by that. The engine If the flamer engineers did get hit by the booby trap, then that means that they would lose a lot more health. And, oh, he's slowing those flamer engineers, keeping them from getting up close. Those riflemen aren't defending them, though, and they're getting they're getting pinned, and pinned units take more damage. Oh, God, those flamer engineers might just go down. They're probably going to go down. If those if those guys get one crit on those flamer engineers, it's over. At least those flamer engineers. Now, the game, not so much. I've lost flamer engineers using the strategy before, and it's never hurt me that badly. Those riflemen might as well retreat. They're going to start losing a lot more. They're going to start doing a lot more manpower damage if those riflemen don't retreat. And they went behind green cover. Okay, they might be able to last a little bit longer. Panzer grenadiers do cost more to reinforce than riflemen. Double the cost, actually. Which, somewhat. Wait. Wait a fucking minute. One, two, three. Okay, just checking something. But anyway, they cost double a rifleman because um. They they're elite armor, so they cost more to make to get back. Uh, and those Panzer Grenadiers are very de are very hard to deal with. Thought it was going to be a fun game. I did I do stupid stuff, <laughs> and Rax just laughs at him. Uh, I love Company of Heroes sometimes. Sometimes I hate it though. If I could be honest. Now those riflemen should probably follow those Flamer Engineers, and I wonder if he went for um. I wonder if his if uh. Rax went for, um, ooh, that armored car killed two engineers on a tree, and those engineers are probably gonna die. Yep! Mmm! <laughs> Whew! That was, that was, that was painful to watch. This Pegren's going back for the cutoff. And sorry for the yelp, but yeah, that was terrible. Now we have a huge ass blob of riflemen and engineers, one of which is only, a, only one is a flamer engine, though, attacking that swim. Now, I don't know why those riflemen didn't support that flamer engineer while it was retreating. It could have actually saved them, because riflemen, in this bulletproof strategy, you're supposed to actually get, um, you should be getting the uh, ability to use sticky grenades, because you, you want to do that to get rid of armored cars, and you also want to build the triage. Now, he built his triage in an interesting location. It's kind of in between the locations. Now, that green cover is not going to help him. Uh, green cover is directional, but he built his triage in an interesting location because the triage is going to be able to heal any unit that comes into base from retreat, but it's not going to be super helpful to reinforce, I don't think. Now those... Wow. That's a lot of Pegrins, actually. How many Pegrins do you make? One, two, three, four... Well, not including ones that he might have lost. I don't think he lost, actually, any. He's made four Pegrins. That's actually a pretty good start for a Panzer Elite player. Uh, to use Pegrins. Now these riflemen behind green cover, they're going to be able to take on these Pegrins no matter what because they have green cover and the, oh that squad's down to one man. If they lose it, then that's bad because that's a G43 squad. Losing a G43 squad is very hurtful. Uh, those riflemen should move uh, should move up the flank and go ahead to this building right here. They could have actually they could actually attack that armored car from the side, but they're doing some pretty good damage from long distance. But those Pegrins can repair it on the field if they want to. Full retreat? Why? 
I see he had flamer engies going in for the flank on the Panzer Grenadiers, but it doesn't make sense why he full retreated. Now it's a good thing he's now the entire point of the bulletproof strategy. When you're doing that, you're supposed to actually kind of sort it. You're supposed to blob because when you blob up, that that means that you can actually take on the Panzer Elite because the Panzer Elite are a very blobby faction. They have abilities that encourage blobbing. For completely honest, fuck the Panzer Elite. They really, really suck. Um, Rax says that his opponent is abusing. I don't really see abuse going on here. Uh, ooh, flanking speed. That means that they can't really catch up with that armored car. That thing's gonna move like a speed demon. Uh, really, he's not abusing anything. If anything, you should have kept those two riflemen together. In the long run, two riflemen together could have taken on even a flanking armored car. And you need to move these riflemen right here around... So that way you can actually, um, so that way you can actually, like, you know, do stuff with them, if I'm completely honest. Uh, they, they, they're not gonna do well just sitting there. Now we have a tank depot up for, uh, Rax. Back in base, not really anything's being researched. He's flowing a lot of manpower. Uh, not a very good thing to do when you're playing Panzer Elite. You can make units out much faster than Americans can. I guess he doesn't want to make too many because he might lose the base. Or the not the base, but lose the map. And if he loses the map, then that means that he's lost the game. Because at that rate, then he's wasted a lot of manpower because now he's losing ma he's losing manpower and rec requisition. No, uh, he's losing manpower in the long run. Now these other riflemen, they're going to cap? But you have a fight. You have an engagement going on over here, and you're and you have units getting veterancy because you're because of this engagement. And you have double armored cars. Move these riflemen up. Move them to the armored cars. Move them up. They do more damage. Gosh. And he gave one of them vet, so now they're vet one offensive. Oy. The Panzer Elite run on a different uh, veterancy system than most of the other factions. And those G43s probably gained vets. You can tell by looking over their heads if you see a little tick. And it was the G43s. Um, the Panzer Elite gained veterancy through the fact that they, they get the offensive and offensive vet. Defensive vet basically means that they uh, become harder to hit and they become harder to kill. Uh, offensive vet means that they do more damage and are e and are coming to easier to kill but they're but they do more overall damage so they shouldn't be killed too easy let's just look at uh rax's economy i mean, built the tank depot he he's probably he probably is waiting to get that f extra fuel so that way he can actually uh make his fur make his um make himself the uh hellcat hellcats will crush these armored cars armored cars are just scrap metal uh it's not really much in terms of buildings out of, uh, out of, I do, I do stupid stuff. Err. That armored car is idling, so not very good for it. If these riflemen, why is he, no, 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 hold on. No. No, no, no. This is how you do not do bulletproof. I'm a new. I'm still kind of what many players would call a newbie at Company of Heroes. This is not how you do it. Okay, you do not send four squads at a single armored car. You just don't do it. Don't do that. First off, because now your infantry blob is full of all of your major units. You're not supposed to do that. When you attack an armored car like this, you send these two squads right here that I have selected. You send them over there. Because you see the armored cars are not together, you send the other two squads, these ones right here, these guys, you send them over here. Because then, when you do that, you then stop him from being able to just, you then crush him for having his armored cars untogether. And then when they come together, you pull all your riflemen together, and you sticky the bastards to death. You have the munitions for it, but he went tank doctrine. That's what's getting me. He went tanks. Why tanks? Does he assume his opponent went... Wh what? Why? Why? Does he assume his opponent went something else? Other than tank... Like, like does he assume his opponent went tank destroyers or something like that? Because if he went tank... Why tanks? He must know that his opponent went... went, went um... 
another doctrine other than tank destroyer. So he knew tanks were free. But why? That's not useful to you when you <laughs> when, when when you look at this in lo in logic. Look at this map. Most of this map is red. That means that most of the map belie belongs to I d I do stupid stuff. That means that you don't sit there and you don't go tanks. You go airborne. The reason you go airborne is to stop Panzer Elite blobs because the airborne strafing run only costs you 150 munitions per use and has a very small re recharge time. And because you have the plus 16 munitions right here, you have a major advantage against him in terms of munitions. He has his own right here, but sure, you have yours first because yours is easier to get and it's directly connected to your base. If he loses this, or if he loses this, or if he loses any of these connecting territories connecting him to this plus 16 munitions, he will lose it, and that means that he's lost. Now you let him keep that fuel for too long. Now that he has that fuel, he's been able to collect a lot more fuel than you. That plus 16 fuel is deadly with Panzer Elite. Panzer Elite require fuel. That's how they get all of their upgrades. In fact, let's just go ahead and look at his at his um, fuel income. 31 fuel per minute. And he has 22 fuel in the bank. Not useful because not useful for you as the American player because as the American player now you are behind. You're behind in tech. Sure, you have a tank depot out, but you don't have the fuel for it. You don't have the fuel for a Hellcat or anything. A single Hellcat would win him this match, but now he's given his opponent a chance to get Panzer Shreks. Look at that guy. He's just waiting. He's just looking for a Hellcat to kill. And then he, and then his, and then his other guys have G43s, which means that any type of flamer unit can actually then get hit. MP44s on those guys. He has a full-on force right here. You don't just take that on with a Hellcat. You have to take it on with some good offensive attacks. Now I understand that. Now I kind of could understand it because he's trying to get tanks out fast. But a fast tank is not as good as a fast AT gun for the, you could get from airborne. Anyway, let's see how this plays out. It's probably gonna play out like this. This is gonna move. It's probably gonna move all the way down here, constantly killing riflemen from up here. Then it's going to run all the way back to where the Panzer Lee are. So the riflemen are going to fly back around to getting the Panzer Lee are. Then they're going to get G43 to or and or attacked. Then this swim wagon will probably die on retreat because the riflemen will, might a good player would go ahead and kill the swim wagon because that's their real way of of getting any type of. In fact, he has three swim wagons. Wow, that's a lot of swim wagons. Uh, a good player would go ahead and kill the swim wagons because why not? Uh, first off, that means that they can't cap as fast, and they can't move around the fa the map as fast. Now, this whole three squads, this whole three squad start that he did, these three Panzer Panzer Grenadier starts, or was this four right here? One, two, three. Yeah, it's four right here, and one other one at the base, which is a tank buster squad. So he knows that his opponent is going for tanks because he's not used fuel in a long time. Uh, yeah. That won't work. <sighs> Let's see what happens. Oh, and by the way, you're a fucking idiot if you do this right. If you do this wrong. <sighs> okay, he didn't kill riflemen, so I was wrong on that prediction. Swim wagon did move. Good. Okay, the riflemen are staying in green cover. Why are you staying in green cover? Get to moving. He's hoarding manpower too. He could use some of that manpower to go ahead and rebuild that engineer for the flamer support. Yet you don't move a flamer NG by itself to a P grand blob. Not by itself. You pull it in with three other ones. All right, that swim's dead. That's good. One swim down, two to go. Now this armored car is going to roll up on these riflemen for a flank. Please kill the. All right, then now they're together. Now they're together. Now move your infantry blob and attack them. Flank them. Do something against them. All right, he's good. This is good. He's keeping them away. He's keeping them at bay at the moment. Now a strafing run here would have been very helpful because look at that. Look at that. Look. Look. Look at that. Just look at it. Look at it. It's just way. It's just begging for some bullets from an airplane. Just begging for it. Just look at it. 
I think a rifle squad went down there too. Oh, a Sherman. Oh no, an M10. Alright, good. He killed one squad. This engagement is actually not going as badly as I thought it would. But there goes a rifle squad. There it goes. It's already about to die. Yep, there it goes dead. Uh, yeah, M10 tank destroyer. Not that great. Misfires a lot. There is a misfire. And it's good. Uh, yeah. And there was the concede, or the, the drop from, uh, Rex. Game overview. Um,. Rax didn't pull bulletproof off half as well as I've seen other people pull bulletproof off. Meaning, I am strong himself and even myself. Uh, first off, he 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 got he. <sighs> don't use the M10. Just a friendly warning, in general. Don't use the M10. The M10 is a buggy piece of shit that was in the game for years until Tales of Valor came out, and then they finally fixed it by giving you another tank that is much better. Meaning. The, meaning the M18 Hellcat. Much better tank, much more efficient, and it doesn't fucking misfire. How did he do over... How did uh, his opponent uh, I Do Stupid Stuff do? I Do Stupid Stuff actually didn't live up to his name. He didn't do anything really stupid as much as he just did stuff that was smart and just outclassed his opponent. Uh, he lost one swim wagon and one squad. Out of the entire match, to lose one swim wagon and one squad... In, a fi in 15 minutes against Bulletproof Strat? Very good. He kept his units alive. He kept them in a good in a good composition. He used proper units. He didn't just get all MP44s or just all G43s or just all Tank Busters. Because Tank Busters, once you give them ta uh, Panzer Strikes, then they lose their anti-infantry capabilities and they become more anti-tank. But, yeah. He didn't just, he didn't just over overcompensate by making, over by making other things. I think he also lost a swim over here. So he might have lost two swims. So he lost two swims, one squad. Very good play from the Panzer Elite. Now, I don't like the Panzer Elite, but I will say, very good play from him. He didn't lose most of his units. Uh, but yeah, never use the helm ten. Just, just don't use it. Not very useful of a unit. Let's move on to the next game. <coughs> it's probably my last game that I'm going to cast, and I'm going to go ahead and... Um, See if Madrai wants to um do torchlight uh today because we're supposed to do another recording session. All right then, and here we have a two v two. Oh, and I and I understand what do I do stupid stuff meant by at least GG. He means like if you're going to leave, just at least GG the game. Okay, so this is a two v two that was recorded on the twenty second of February this year. And it's a 2-2 between a Brit and American versus a Panzer Elite and a Wehrmacht. Dargor and Ransom R for the American and Brit. And Zynok, or Zonic, like Sonic, Zonic and Sunravers as the Wehrmacht and Panzer Elite respectively. Oh, and Dargor and Ransom R for the Brit and the American respectively. Let's go ahead and load the match. It's on good old Declare. Uh, Declare was designed by Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam, not Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam. <laughs> Uncle Sam is a uh, very good map maker. I actually like this map very much. Uh, there's a 1v1 version and a 2v2 version. A lot of people like the 2v2 version, but they just recently took the 2v2 version out of the 2v2 auto match, which is weird. It, they didn't add the 1v1 to the 1v1 auto match because the 1v1 mat, um, one is very good. Sorry if you're chewing, I'm uh, eating some crackers. Let's see what happens. Brits and Americans is a very good, is a very interesting combo. Eh. So we're starting on, um... Oh, this is probably a random auto match because he's just saying hi to his opponent. To, to his teammate. So they start off with a two-pile start from, a uh, What is that, Zonic? and a 
standard pigment start probably from his uh, companion Sun Ravers. Sorry, I'll follow war, I keep forgetting to do that. I have a three a two NG start, more than likely, from What the fuck is he doing? Ransom R just put his barracks near What? He put his barracks right here at the edge of his territory on this side. Interesting choice. Why not put it over here where the opening gate is? Anyway, Ransom R is going ahead and um, capping over here. We have some early game capping just from the Pioneers. We have an MG from Zonic. We have a lieutenant out from uh, the headquarters command truck for, for Dargor. Very useful unit. Uh, it gives an it parts offensive bonuses in his arc of his arc of fire. And it looks like the Panzer leaders find the Brits and the Americans find the Wehrmacht. Vico factions versus opposing front factions. As far as um where they were set up. Now this lieutenant is very good to keep the um to keep these Brit these uh, infantry sections alive as they'll get the offensive bonuses with him being around. They just use their deployability, not very good use of it, um, only killing one guy on the Pegren squad. Now it's useful from the sense that um it's useful from the sense that when you do that, that you kill a Pegren, which means that now the guy has to spend forty five manpower to reinforce that Pegren because it's an instant kill. Not very useful. Uh, it looks like everything is going into a head right here, though, because we have the rifleman flanking those Panzer Grenadiers right there, and we have the MG about to open up on the rifleman, but he doesn't notice it, so he's going to keep attacking the, the Pegrins. And then we have the infantry section moving around the other side. They killed the bike very quickly. Um, a jeep out from uh, Rom from Ransom R. Interesting choice of a unit, probably because it's two v two. Two v twos can be more open to jeeps than in one v ones, in my opinion. Uh, that Pegrin might go down if he uses another deploy, and he doesn't go down though. That's sad. Uh, would have been useful to kill that one Pegrin. Now the MG did pack up, but it's not going to run away. It's just going to sit there and reposition in order to kill that Jeep. MGs like that can actually kill Jeeps pretty quickly. This first infantry section from Dargor is actually down to one man, and it's going to have to retreat. They it retreat pass right in front of the Pegrins. Not a very good retreat path. Now this other infantry section is sitting here and it's actually attacking the Pegrens from the side. It should just go ahead and flank and strip flank, but the MG is now keeping him from doing that, keeping him at bay. Um, we have the lieutenant over here. Why? I will never know. Anyway. The jeep has been doing a little bit of harassing here and there, but he's not doing much. The infantry section will enter the building in order to actually get help it actually to get a better defensive position, but it has no extra upgrades like a Bren or a another or another recon section, so therefore it's not gonna actually be able to do much against the fact much against the fact that it's getting attacked from the window. It's just gonna be able to shoot out the window. They have to leave and then they instantly retreat away from the building, however. Jeep trying to kill, try opening up on the Kenton Crab, probably trying to stop it from uh from running in. Sun Ravers mentions to his teammate that uh there's an MG that the MG is in a house, probably to help kite the Jeep right into it. We have some early infantry vet, very badly played from uh from Dargo or from completely honest, giving those Panzer Grenadiers an early vet of an infantry vet strike, uh, offensive infantry vet strike. And here comes that MG. It's probably going to enter the building like Sun Ravers asked his opponent to do. They're trying to open up on the MG before it gets in there, but they should have just entered it in general before they even got there because that would have been more helpful, but he didn't. The HQ command truck moved up to be a forward HQ, so that way this uh, whole section cannot be taken up completely. But now it's going to turn against him because now that he, now that that, that MG is right there, it's got every unit that he tries to move is going to get instantly suppressed. And those recon sections on negative cover. Negative cover means that they take more than half, they take like 50% more damage. We have a rifleman flank up here to help, this, to help his British brother though, but then we have some MP44 Volks flanking those guys. 
and the MG was in the side part of the building, so that means that he can actually see the riflemen. Those riflemen are taking heavy casualties and losses, and then those infantry sections were able to get out, though, because the riflemen were getting attacked, so they were able to hide, they were able to hold off. Now, these infantry sections should enter this building, because this building does have a window on its front, as you can see, that it can shoot out of. They should also deploy a sniper from this infantry section in order to actually kill that MG over there. On the other parts of the map, uh, some riflemen are, are back capping over there. This munitions point hasn't been capped yet, and the side and the um the lines are starting to be drawn pretty easily. Uh, these infantry sections are building a mortar emplacement. Uh, not very useful at this point in the game because really a mortar emplacement is not going to do much. Uh, this infant, this other Panzer Grenadier squad actually did get a stripe of, vi of vet. We'll see what they give what he gives them. Probably defensive vet. Uh, defensive vet is very useful. Now we have an engineer over here, but it's down to one man. It's against the press. It's not going to last much longer. Now these infantry sections are actually getting up, and they because they're not getting attacked, but then they lose it. They lose the mortar pit because another MG opens up on them. And now this forward HQ is going to be a major pain in the ass for for uh, the for the Panzer, for the other guy, for these um infantry sections. He's going to have to pack up. He's going to have to head back to head back to main headquarters because otherwise he's going to get attacked heavily. This is where you give speed governors to your units. And now he has his field support truck, but he has to send it back because he doesn't want it to get overrun. Speed governors would have helped a lot there because speed governors allow the units to move around faster and move around easier cuz these got cuz those units move really slow double mp40 volks right there they can tear up riflemen but bars are popped on the riflemen earlier so that way they can actually go for mid and long range the mg that was in this house or actually the mg that was right here moved up to this house i said that if he moved up right here then that would have actually been very helpful because then he could have actually taken out the mg in the other house because he could just attack it now Bars being popped, bars can actually rip up this armored car pretty well. Unlike the last game that I did on the stream, uh, the bar where uh, the guy went, where the armored car was doing a lot of damage and he didn't do very well against it, an armored car here could be dead. The jeep goes down because MP44 volts are actually really, really powerful against jeeps, and they shouldn't have been. He shouldn't have rushed that jeep right into there. And that's they're losing a lot. The American and Brit are actually not having a very good early game here. Uh, their early game is really getting overrun by these MP44 volts, which are tearing up everything. Double MP44 volts. Common in 2v2s, not too common in 1v1s because riflemen with bars can usually kill them. Now we have our first stripe of infantry vet for volks for, uh, from, of infantry vet from, uh, what's the fuck the name? S Zonic. Uh, it's Sonic's clone from an alternate reality. Anyway. So these early, so this early stripe of infantry vet helps the Volks grenadiers. They actually get a passive healing bonus. Now the lieutenant rifle grenadiers is a very interesting upgrade because it actually does work as a form of like unit artillery to an extent. It's very good for um, attacking. Now why would you move the lieutenant up but not but then full full retreat? It would have been better if he actually um and I got a message on Steam. It would have been better if he sat there and went ahead and used the lieutenant on the rifle grenadiers because rifle grenadiers gain a gain a major boost to um their accuracy when they get a lieutenant on them. So it would have been helpful to have that. Now these engineers are actually on by a car. <laughs> it actually looks funny. It's like he like he kind of just walked out. And ransom are dropped. Which means now we only have one player actually who's an who's an actual person. Now the uh, AI is taken over for Ransom R, so now all American units are now AI. I assume Ransom R probably thought the match was over and probably just quit, which is a bitch move to do in a two v two. Completely honest. That armed car do though did get its um did get its first stripe of defensive vet. Which means that now it's hard to hit, hard to hard to kill in general, and that rifle squad is down to one man. But I will not pay attention to the American anymore because it is an AI. Let's pay attention to the Brits. Now those rifle grenadiers should have actually went ahead and they should have gone ahead and uh, attacked that MG. With they, when, since they have a lieutenant on them, they would have better accuracy if they had attacked it and instead of um, trying to cap. They could have done more. Now they have to retreat back, and they're just going to leave that that entire area open. A lot of manpower damage being done this early game from the uh, Ver from the Wehrmacht and his uh, compadre Panzer elite player. We have pack out. Uh, pack will be very helpful for when the inevitable uh, what's it called? 
can't remember the name of it when the when the inevitable Stuart comes in. But for now, these armored car this armored car is actually doing a lot of damage. It's keeping up. It's keeping the. It's keeping most of these units away. And even with these Brens, these Brens are not doing much. We have a second. Wow, Vet two already. Vet two. That's that's sad. Ten minutes into the game, a Vet two. Vet two Pgren. Ooh. Now that Piat actually did do a lot of damage, and that was, I guess this is form of ATs, Piats. Piats have a habit of bugging for me, that's why I don't use them too often. Full retreat again. Wow. Escalate to assault phase. Uh, the Wehrmacht play has already gone to tier 3. Gosh, I hate the computer in this game sometimes. <sighs> Now I have some an MG opening up on those riflemen there, and it just then they just retreat, which is something that an actual player would never do, which is why it's like the AI. Uh, we have some Panzer Elite Pegrens moving up to try and take out these engineers before they even get the cap. Now we have some infantry sections. We have a recon, a another type, and another type: a Bren, a rifle grenade, and a recon section. Uh, the rifle grenades should take out that pack, so that way that vehicles can actually come out unabated. Uh, single shot should kill, yep, should kill one man like I thought. Now they could deploy a sniper right on the, and good, they killed it, they destroyed the pack crew. That's good from the fact that now there's no more AT on the field, but that, wow, that armored car is actually two guy is actually already Vet 2. Uh, Vet 2 offensive and Vet 1 defensive. Uh, which means that now it's just Vet 2 straight, but... And the computer loses another rifleman. Sturm armory completed, and we have a. I think that's a stug being produced out of there. One thing I like about 2v2s, and you seeing it here, is that Panzer Elite. Well, actually, no, you're not seeing it here because that's a Panzer Elite vehicle. But what you can see in a 2v2 is that uh, Panzer Elite can also heal uh, Wehrmacht units if you have them together. So, Wehrmacht can heal Panzer Elite um, vehicles, and Panzer Elite can heal Wehrmacht vehicles. Very useful in the long run. Now, because they're playing against an AI, and usually the AI goes to being an expert difficulty, but I guess this expert difficulty just sat there and decided to be on the retard on the re, -re list this week, uh, it's not doing much. Now, the problem is from the Brit, from Dargor, what I'm seeing that he's doing so wrong all the time is that he's not wow that was a nice rifle grenade shell uh he's n he's blobbing up his units ooh some artillery now he's giving veteran to his tanks the Wehrmacht player is and he has his first stug out a stug four stug four is similar to his stew brother just a piece of scrap metal with a dick on its face um he's Ooh, Stug's walking right up to those riflemen. It's going to probably do some damage. Stug's at Vet 3 do get armor skirts, which means that they're not they're less susceptible to tread shots. Wow, two shot two kills in one shot. Stug's unlike their Stu counterpart though, they don't actually uh, have their Stu 42 counterpart. They don't actually get um area of effect damage as much as they do other things. We have a 17 pounder AT gun being produced. Very good for uh, dealing with these these armored this armored car has been really doing some manpower damage to be honest. Uh, this rifle grenade needs to go ahead and take out that MG. It's down to two men. One shot from that rifle grenade should do it. But they're suppressed. Okay. Now they're unsuppressed. Now move. Move. Up here at the north, we have some Volks Renadiers that's actually trying to cap the um everything up at the north end of the field because there's really nothing to stop them. Uh, we have a 17 pounder AT gun built, and we have the Sappers actually put into cloak. Yes, Sappers can do that if you did not know. Sappers with Piats can actually go into a cloak position, and they can actually go ahead and be uh they can actually help attack something. Now he's probably going to try and bait out this um this. AT, ooh, nice shot from that rifle grenade. He's probably going to try and bait out this um this armored car from the PE. 
Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. scout car. Scout car is stealing resources. Nice. Now the rifle grenades did probably take out that and that um that MG, but there's a secondary MG right there, probably killed on retreat. Now the pack is dead, so now there can be some AT on the field. Uh, I have no idea. Oh, that's where the artillery is coming from. A 17-pounder AT gun was built in the base for the um, or built in the location of the base for the Brits. Now they stole. Ooh, the Amer the computer did go for W did go for WSC, but oh gosh, here comes some off-map artillery from the Panzer Elite and or Wehrmacht. Ooh, firestorm. That means that the Wehrmacht did go for Terror Doctrine. Yes, he did. I just checked. I didn't actually know this before. Uh, terror Doctrine means that he's probably going for the KT, just in case this match goes on for a bit too long for him. Uh, he still has some good some good uh, AT out here, though. He has this Stu for this Stug four, and wow! <laughs> uh, I think that I think he's going to be repaired, guys. And wow, Vet three armored car, double defensive Vet, single offensive Vet. Um, and double, wow, offense and defensive vet on these guys, and their four-man squads. And these guys have a bar. Jesus. And a Panzer Shrek. GG. Now the rifle, now the American player, no, the, the AI stole the, stole the, uh, the pack right there. But it's not moving. That's why I hate the AI in this game. And we have Royal Engineers, really. Real engineers chosen from um chosen from whatever his fucking name is uh Dargor <laughs> Dargor chose Royal Engineers why Royal Engineers I don't know why not Royal Engineers because Royal Engineers not very useful doctrine in the long run when you really start looking at what they give you they give you though they give you Churchills. Churchills are not very good tanks, actually, in the long run. They can actually die pretty quickly and easily. They let you implant a s plant a unit down, or yeah, set them down to where they can take uh, defensive. They basically take a, a defensive bonus, and then um, you get like three different types of Churchills. You get this Churchill, this basic Churchill that costs 600 manpower to produce. Then you get several. Then you get um, several other churches. We have a major engagement between these Panzer Elite and these uh, Brits right here. Rifle grenades are doing a nice bit of damage, and so is that Bren. But the rifle grenades have to retreat because they are getting a bit overpowered. If they had actually killed that Vet 2 squad, that would have been very helpful. But those others, that they have like three Vet 2 squads now. The Panzer Elite do. Escalate to battle phase was completed by the Wehrmacht, which means he's probably gonna go for Panthers and the like, and uh, that's not gonna be good. Up here we have some rangers firing up in order to attack this Stug 4, but there are two Stug 4s, so they're not really doing much of anything. They get a nice rear armor shot on them though, and firing up does, it's its only a passive thing, it, it keeps them from getting suppressed. Now these Stug 4s are probably going to kill this Churchill, because Churchills have terrible frontal armor, and they're probably going to get killed, it's probably going to get killed off. Now if that Churchill can kill that, wow, that was straight up, that was straight up defensive doctrine, defensive... De defensive miss, um, but that Churchill can kill that, uh, can't kill him. You can't do that. But that Churchill can kill that guy, which he doesn't because he decides not to chase after the Vet 3 us, the Vet 3 thing that's killing a lot of units. Uh, then he could have actually done a lot of damage to the Panzer Elite's army because all that would have been left was a bunch of Pegrens. Wow. That was like a snipe shot. Did you see that? <laughs> it like curved down to attack the guy. <laughs> this Churchill's probably gonna go down because double stugs will kill it. Those Piats should kind of turn around and start attacking the other stugs. That way, they can, that can get Manga destroyed too. It does hunker down. The Churchill does hunker down though, so it gets a defensive position. Sun River says he's back. Oh, I know, he says back, so he's saying, like, move back, back up. Okay. Good choice of, uh, using, good choice to communicate that to your teammate in case your teammate thought that he was going to do something awesome because he was not. And those Rangers do clear out that second MG. 
I recommend stealing these MGs because stealing them means that now nothing can get them. Why would you steal the 30 cal? Why would you steal 30 cal and not an MP, not an MG42? And they do kill, and the um, the Rangers do finish off that armored car. Very nice. Now, one thing I hope these these uh player, this British player at least remembers, because the the computer won't know to do it. But I hope this British player does remember that hey. You have to kill Rex when you're fighting Panzer Elite. Otherwise, a very big ass, very cost, very costly unit will come around and revive them, called the Burge Tiger. Burge Tiger, very not fun. Very unfun. We have the secondary Churchill out. But it's going to get absolutely raped. And there goes the MG, the 30 caliber, not very great. And you just set up a Churchill with this. You set up a Churchill with its rear armor facing the units that can shoot Panzerfaust at it. How stupid are you? Look at that. That's the frontal armor. That's the rear. This one smartly plays. Rear armor is right here. Frontal armor is facing them. This one not so much. Anyway. He's trying to attack the Stug, I assume, because he wants to kill the Stug first. But that Stug's going to get out of there in time, because Churchill's don't have that type of range. Uh, Churchill's really work better if you have the Cromwell command tank, but I don't even think... Yeah, he didn't. I don't even think uh, Dargor even went for, the went for the Cromwell command tank. Or for Tier 3. Now, a lot of... MP40 volts. MP40 volts, great for the early game, but later on in the game when units of range start rolling in, they lose usability very, very quickly. Now we have a lot of VET 3 over here. VET 2, two VET, double offensive VET Panzer Grenadiers here. Double offensive VET and one defensive VET uh, Panzer Grenadiers there. Both of them are that, actually. Now these double Churchills, they're gonna need repairs like yesterday, so. Uh, the Panzer, so the, the, the British player should go ahead and, I think, I, I personally would make a, uh, another, got another, um, what is it, um, my mind's leaving me, <laughs> what are they called, Sapper, another Sapper, we have double Stukas from the Wehrmacht player, that's like 200 something munitions, like 300 munitions almost, to make double Stukas. Sunravers mentions that he needs a repair bunker. I don't know why, because he only has AT half track and a scout car that's stealing resources. He has a major army of Panzer Grenadiers, none of which are actually MP40s, which is very interesting. That's usually something that um people get. Motor pool, please, cap. Did Zonic just? Oh, motor, please, cap. Yeah, does Zonic just ask? Huh. Okay. I, I, I was like, I was say, did the computer just ask someone, ask, ask his, his teammate to do something? Alright, good, he's moving the lieutenant back. But that lieutenant has no vet, and it's been 23 minutes in. 23 minutes in, that lieutenant should at least have vet one if it's lasted that long. These Grens moving back on the north, these Grens and Volks moving back on the north to actually take back to take back the north because they lost a lot of it earlier. This house is on fire. I don't know why it's on fire, but it's on fire and constantly losing health. I assume something with fire with incendiary rounds hit it. Down here we have another massive engagement. Main gun destroyed on one of those Churchills, probably a Stuka barrage that uh, went and hit those Churchills. Those sappers are going to have their work cut out for them for these Churchills. These Churchills have a lot of health, but they're not very good but they're not very good tanks in the long run. Um, you should most definitely keep your Churchills safe and you should not allow them to get too much health damage because it's going to take a long time to actually repair those uh, damages. Now we have another now we have this Stug 4 here attacking these Rangers. 
Uh, the Rangers still do have both of their Panzer Shrek, their Panzer Shrek, both of their bazookas, uh, and they they fired up because the computer decided to fire up for no reason. Oh, wow! My mouse is wild, wildly moving around. Now those rifle grenades not doing a lot in the long run, like th like I thought they would against those Panzer Grenadiers. But that's because the thing about the and this is why. Panzer Elite Veterancy is interesting and kind of bullshit at the same time. The more defensive a unit becomes, the less likely it is to get hit. So sometimes unit, things that should hit it just outright miss. They, like randomly you'll just notice, okay... What the hell? Oh god, V1 Rocket Barrage coming right down on something. Ooh! <laughs> oh! Wow! Wow. I'm speechless. I am absolutely speechless. V1 killed a Churchill, the Sappers, and an AT gun emplacement. That howitzer has been getting barraged by Stukas the entire game. And those and those rangers can't do shit to this stug. This stug is still alive so long in. It's a tier three unit that has been living this long. Wow, and gets and those rangers get sniped on retreat by the stug. <laughs> wow. Those rifle grenades are opening up on the Wow. That was a that V1 was beautiful. <laughs> that V1 was beaut was absolutely beautiful. It 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 almost makes you want to cry. Just like that that was so beautiful. Ranger, everything was just dead. Everything was just dead. Got another MG42 sitting over there. A lot of MG42s were built this today. Some more Stuka Barrage. Mm. Stukas. Not, um, not something you see a lot on 1v1 because Stukas cost a lot of munitions. Unless you have a lot of Rex to, re to reclaim. Because, uh, the in fact, is he even reclaiming Rex anywhere? Where's some Pioneers so I can see? Nope, he's not. I don't see any Pioneers anywhere. Wow, the Brit. So the Brit player finally got his captain out. Like better late than never, I guess, because I guess he sees that now it's time about time to get some tier three. Whew. Did that captain actually kill someone? No, it didn't. It hasn't killed anyone. As soon as I thought it did, silly me. Captains can't kill anyone. If if you have a captain and it's ever killed anything, like ever. You have a badass captain. That captain should be the, ar the the general of the army. Fuck Winston Churchill. <laughs> because captains are so un un unable to do anything offensively. And we have these... I think the Brit player lost most of his units. We have this 17... This, uh... Eight, what is this? Whoa! Headquarters command truck. Getting absolutely butt fucked. Uh, yeah. Rail Engineers gives you the ability to actually um give your head, give your command. Oh, here comes some uh, here comes some a firestorm right there on the on the uh, headquarters command truck. It's not gonna get out of there in time. It's probably gonna go down. I wouldn't be. I, oh, there it goes what? Wow, straight up shot to it. Straight shot to the to the headquarters command truck. Now all he has is his field support truck. Now, what happens when you lose your headquarters command truck? Very good question, viewer. Uh, when you lose your headquarters command truck, all you can do is reproduce it. That's all you can do. You can't really produce anything else because you need it in order to build your tier 2 and tier 3 buildings. I don't even think you could really build units out of anything out at that point. That 17 pounder is probably toast, and there it goes. Hmm. 
This has not been a very good uh, game for the British player. It's probably because he's using AI and his opponent and his teammate left him in a um, bad situation. But yeah, he he's he's stuck around. I'll give him that. He has stuck around for a long while. Um, considering the fact that he's that he's lost so much in terms of units, he got these Royal Engineers, which Royal Engineers are much better uh, repairs than PS are. That was something that I meant to mention earlier when his, when his Piets were uh, repairing that Churchill. It's better to get Royal Engineers because Royal Engineers can actually give you, um, no, not, well, not Royal Engineers, but uh, Expert Engineers give you, can give your vehicles double health. And double health is very useful in the long run for uh, vehicles because it gives them more survivability. Vet, uh, tier 2 stewards can actually last against martyrs pretty well if they have Expert Engineer support. Now you have these Brens and this Lieutenant attempting to attack these vet, these these MP44 Volks. They're doing pretty good damage, but they're not doing a lot. The Vet 3 MP44 Volks, actually. Lieutenant didn't even get a single stripe of infantry vet. That Vickers emplacement is actually so destroyed that you can see the guy that's sitting inside, funnily enough. Huge blob of pegrims. Something the Panzer Elite like to do. AT and everything. The Panzer Elite player probably sees it as, well, there's no real way that we're going to lose this at this point. So let's just attack. And then he just full retreats. Why would you full retreat like that? These Rangers are in a bad situation. They're not going to be able to handle these uh, Vet 3 KCH. Vet 3 Knights Cross always have uh, heroic armor. Very useful for dealing with uh, infantry and anything, really. They also take two sniper shells to kill. I know it's kind of weird. They kind of, they kind of, their, their their heads are kind of protected by like steel or something, and so they're just able to do that. How many ranges does the computer have? One, two, three, four. Does it have any riflemen left? Holy, holy shit! Look at this he has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rangers and one vet two riflemen. Nine ranger squads. Wow. That's um. That's something. Now this is a AVR. This is a Churchill AVRE. Uh, it's useful for artillery sake because it can actually get rid of infantry blobs. It's very useful against ant. It's very good anti blob. Now we have this AT half track moving up. It's just scrap metal. Oh, treadbreaker shot. <laughs> but that's his only use. That's his only useful ability is a treadbreaker shot, and then it dies. That's uh, quite sad. That was probably a waste of a treadbreaker shot when sappers could just roll up real quick and repair that. But as you can tell, this this match is kind of already over. I at 100 at 100 VPs. Ooh, another V1. Ooh. Let's we'll see where it lands. Ooh. It actually didn't hit anything. <laughs> that was such a pathetic V1. The first one was beautiful. The second one was kind of the lesser of the two. I think that I think that one was the one that nobody loved. <laughs> you want play alone. Whoa. Whoa. Take I take back everything I've ever I've said bad about the AVRE. That was awesome. It just took out an entire Panzer Grenadier squad in one shot. One shot. It one. Not only. I mean, I mean, it killed them. It one shot at the bastards.
Wow. And then the MG emplacement pulls a like pulls a fast one and gets it and gets an extra bit of line of sight because of where the um where the Churchill was and is able to kill that last Panzer right here. Two P Grin squads dead in seconds of each other. Wow. It's amazement all around. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this game because we already kind of can see what's going to happen here. Just kind of look around. I think they kill some squads off. There's really no point in keep going about this. Eventually, the Brit player just quits. I assume he has two AVRV AVREs. Gets stuka barraged. Oh, kills a uh, kills a mortar on retreat. Expert engineers run away. There's a Panther on the field. Panthers are very heavy armor. Very good against anything. Was that KT? This King Tiger got mixed up. I'm sorry. I should be killed. Uh, yeah. Everything gets killed. All the, the all these ranges are dead. AVRE goes down. Hunkers down the other one. That has uh, expert engineer support. That's what happens when you give expert Eng We use expert engineers. That has a white health bar. That means that it has like double health. Uh, the AVRE is probably trying to go ahead and uh, kill some kill some more people. King Tiger opens up on the AVRE. It's going to kill it because expert engineers, while they repair fast, they don't repair fast enough. Uh, these other things are coming around. They kill the expert engineers. Rangers come up. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Did you just see that? That AVRE just kind of like popped. Popped right out of the ground. Like literally like, jumped up. And then started backpedaling off. Anyway, he starts trying to run away from the King Tiger. Hunkers down again. I don't know why, because King Tiger still see him. Kills the AVRE while the Hunkers down. In the middle of Hunker down. Uh, yeah. I think the entire British force has been killed. I think it was only like one or two guys left. Doesn't surprise me that he left. Um, his teammate left him in a bad situation. Probably a player that didn't know what he was doing. Um, but he 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 did. Pull, I'll give the British player this for having to fight with an with a sync with a computer. For having to fight with a computer, I will say that he at least tried his best. But he was outmatched by two players, and the computer did a lot of derpy things. Now I've had this happen to me before too, but this doesn't. But Nowadays it doesn't happen as much because I don't usually go class 2v2, I usually go classic 2v2 AT because class 2v2 AT means that you have a teammate who you, standard, who you actually ask to join your 2v2 uh, straight. Uh, today I did a basic match with my friend Komak and we uh, we did a class 2v2 and, we, well no we didn't do a class 2v2, we did a, a 2v2, straight 2v2 and the 2v2 went over pretty well until he dropped midway through the match. I didn't get mad at him, of course, because he because his internet derped, um, and so we had to drop. Uh, and then after that, I got a computer and I still won. But that was with us playing double Americans. Now this guy might not have been very good at Brits, or he might not have understood how to fight the uh, the Wehrmacht. In all honesty, the Wehrmacht vetted virtually every single thing that they had. Look at all of that. They probably vetted everything, including support weapons. Even though there were no support weapons on the field because everything kept dying. Overall match, uh, if the American player hadn't dropped when he did, maybe they would have won. I'm not really too sure. Uh, I always I find it odd that the computer went and got like 20-something rangers. That upkeep cost is a bitch then. <laughs> but, yeah. Anything anything else? Not really. Uh, well played from the Brit for for being basically alone against two two teams at the same time. But uh, yeah, uh, I guess I'll I guess we'll uh, move on to another one. Let's see. Is there one more game that I got? Oh, Joe versus Armo King. This is the last one I'm going to do. Uh, I'm just going to uh, check that Steam message I got earlier. Or not. Uh, let's just alt-tab for a second. Take a quick break um, before I get to this last one. Uh, 
Uh, I'm just going to um, mute my mic or try to mute my mic. Maybe I'll. Mm, I don't know. I'm going to put on some music. Hopefully it works correctly. I'm still getting used to the streaming thing. Uh, let's try this song. And let's change the um the view for you all. Uh, let's add media file. I'm sorry if you can see my things and all of that. I'm still getting I'm still getting this all together. I don't know. Here's a picture of my cat. This is going to be our break. This is going to represent our break. My cat. Look at it. <laughs> anyway. I can't mute this mic, by the way, so sorry to say that, that you just have to hear me like just looking up stuff on um, online for a second. that I've been working on is uh, I've been working on um, getting a tournament together for Dawn of War 2 Retribution, the Elite mod, and uh, I've currently I've currently got the map pool set up. I need to check to make sure that I have enough players on Binary Beast uh, so I can start working on uh, making the brackets. Because uh, if I don't get the binary beast thing to work correctly, then it won't. Th th well, actually, yeah. If I don't get that working correctly, I can't actually um, do tournament very well. So I just have to check to make sure that five players at least have entered. Hopefully they have, because I've, I've been telling people to please formally join. Damn it! One person didn't join. It's only one more. I could do it myself, but I don't want to. Uh, what's his name? Hermit needs to get back to me to do that. Uh, is he online? Of course he isn't. Damn it. I'm gonna tell Kasuki to actually sign up, because I know he wanted to join. No, I'll just do it myself. I'll, I'll join the I'll, I'll join the tournament myself, and then I'll be able to do it. Cause then I can do that. You can still join the tournament. Please note you must confirm your position. For the draw, you may only turn that down a bit. Eh, we keep Sawa going. All right, uh, players. Alright then, admin. There we go, now I can start brackets. Must add teams before we start.
There we go. Okay, so I guess I need two. I need I need like four more people because I need six at least. So I, I just I just tested using um two people that I know wanted to join, but they um but they could but they haven't signed up yet. Yeah, I need more people. Damn it. I need to get Marcelin in order to, um... I, I'm gonna go ahead and start messaging him probably later. Uh, about signing, about him, you know, talking about it. be a bit longer than a five minute break. <sighs> I don't know, I might do a match. See how I play. Last thing you need to do is hear someone talk about how bad someone else is playing and then <laughs> excuse me. Hear someone hear, hear someone say how bad someone else is playing and then not, then they suck at the game themselves. Um, I don't know how I'm supposed to get rid of that thing though. The mouse cursor, because I because I can still see that it comes up on the screen when in the game because the game is in windowed mode at the moment. <sighs> yeah, so a little more song play while I wait for Mars to send me that message. short song. I forgot how short that song is. Alright then. Let's go and get rid of my cat's face. Get back to the actual thing. Alright. P.E. Now this is... Oh! I didn't even notice. I have two games left. Huh. Well, I would ask the chat which one they would want to see. I could show them a game that I did with Comac. That's the last recorded game I have because it's my temp rec file. Or I could do Excellent PE 1v1 or Joe. We already did a match on Longros. Let's go ahead and just load up PE. I have no idea what the how long this match is going to be or what this match is like. Uh, aim strong bulletproof shot works very well on this map, so I wonder if uh, Joe did it on this map. He's fighting Armo King. Oh. One check, one second, let's just... Damn it, Steam! I want to check that message because I might have been Mars game back to me. Oh, well, Joe is playing as the Americans versus the Pan versus uh, Armo King's Panzer Elite. Uh, very funky barracks placement because he's placing the barracks in the middle of his base uh, instead of placing it forward for a forward reinforcement point to get units out of the out of the base faster. Our first Pigrin out from uh, Armo King. I don't know if it's a glitch or something why I can't see that being captured. Okay, there it is. I finally see the flag going up. We have a 3 NG start, probably going for bulletproof. And we have a very extended engineer 
engineer's moving all the way out to this victory point, I assume. And that engineer's actually moving all the way out to this high munition, high fuel point. Interesting. Well, this other one is actually capping the... Whoa! That engineer's going all the way out to that high fuel point. Why? This is going to overextend him so much. He's definitely not going to have that rifle out in time. He's going for a jeep? What? Um, interesting choice. We'll see how this goes. I've never seen a strat. I've never seen anyone go Jeep versus Panzer Elite. Jeep just doesn't ever seem viable. I hope he's not going to sit there and sit the Jeep around. I wonder if he went for the Jeep to try and fight the Ketten. But the Ketten doesn't have any offensive capability whatsoever. So I don't understand. Okay, so he entered the building. Those engineers are going to die. He's getting his rifle out. Alright. Oh! <laughs> that, that, I, I said it. I called it. But I, I didn't actually expect it to happen that quickly. It was so brutal. So now this jeep is kind of sort of on its own. It has no repair crew. Ooh. I never actually noticed that. The little front end of the jeep just fell off. From the small arms fire. Interesting. Alright then, first rifleman out from, uh, Joe. Look at that panther! <laughs> he was like jumping on his, on his, on his uh, guys' back. He did. He lost that second engineer. Why would you lose the second engineer? This isn't a very good start from Joe. He's microing that jeep well enough to back it up to where the engineers are, but not really doing too hot. The Ketten's taking the entire right, the entire right hand side of the map, and these three, and these uh, three Pegren squads are going to rip that engineer and this jeep apart if they see them, if they get enough life sight bonus. He's probably trying to do a quick field repair on the jeep to give it a at least a somewhat repaired engine. It's repaired now. Normally, in this situation, I would have yeah, he's doing it now. I would say in this situation, I would just go ahead and move the jeep the minute that the uh, engines repair it, so that way it can actually do some more. DPS and get around faster. Now we see this Pegren blob moving around. They're actually retreating back to base. I assume that means Armo King has enough for his for another building. He's going Panzer Jaeger Command after getting his tier one building. Um, it's not a very good start from uh, Joe though. Joe's not exactly keeping his keeping his units alive. He's lost two engineers, and the entire thing of the bulletproof strategy is to not use a jeep. You're not even supposed to use a jeep in the in the engineer. So he went. Wow. So he went. Um, he went for scorched earth tactics, like almost many people do. And there goes the boot trap. But he he already saw it being placed. So I don't know why he even bothered and why he didn't just attack the ketten more. But this jeep is doing all right DPS. At least it's keeping this um it's it's hurting it's hurting this uh Panzer Grenadier squad so they can lose a model. Once they lose a man, that means that now they have to spend a little bit more. And he's microing that jeep to try and get them off the cap. That's good. That was very good micro from him from Joe. See Joe's doing well with that jeep, but now he's going to lose that third engineer and it's not going to it's not going to be pretty. That's three engineers gone and he has some idle riflemen ar running around. Or sitting around, not running around, sitting around. That jeep's gonna get raped if it doesn't move. It has no engineer support. Joe hasn't done well with his universe preservation, to be completely honest. He's sitting there. He's just sitting there. Does he actually think this jeep's gonna do anything? A jeep versus that Panzer Grenadier squad is not gonna do anything. And he has no. Now he has to make engineers out. It had been different if he had, like, maybe two engineers left and he just lost that one. He just lost his first one. But no, he has only one left. The one he just made. He should have given them flamers. Flamer engineers can last against Panzer Grenadiers with a Jeep. 
Now on this side we have some idle pigrens. Uh, you know that. Those Why is he not repairing his jeep? Don't tell. Me. Is he producing more engineers? No, he's not. Those engineers are are getting a flamer though, so he's gonna get a nice flamer pop on these uh, Panzer Grenadiers. He push He should have put the engineers in the house though. Engineers in the house would have been much more deadly, because then he would because then it would have literally been a pop. Now you have an armored car out here from um, Armo King attacking these riflemen that are in the building. Yeah, all right, we have a secondary engineer. That's like the fifth one now produced, or the fifth engineer on the field. Uh, we have some idle engineer. Did he cancel the flamer on those engineers that were that he was getting earlier? He did. He canceled the flamer on those engineers. Why? Why would you cancel the flamer? Those riflemen are getting torn up, but they should have stayed in the building because they were taking less damage because they are in a building. Now that they're behind the building, they're not getting attacked. These pigrens are going to move up, and they're going to give that that uh, armored car some line of sight bonus. He's getting mines and placing them on the road. Interesting choice. Now it's going to be helpful to have those mines on the road because actually when a vehicle starts rolling up on these engineers or start rolling up around because the Panzer Elite are very based around their vehicle play, uh, when that vehicle starts rolling up, uh, yeah, that vehicle is going to get totally wrecked. But that's a very, but it's, it's not a good place for a mine. Now they killed the Ketten down here. It's not very hard to kill a Ketten, though, with a jeep, because a Ketten can't fight back. Now, Panzer Grenadiers can detect mines. This is where, I ho this is where I'm praying to God that he did not notice those mines. I, I hope he didn't. Can't really check on the fog of war. At least I don't think you can. But, uh, yeah. Hopefully he didn't see those mines because otherwise they're going to be a useless 25 munitions import uh, thing. And why does he not move those engineers? He's not microing his units very well. And that, yep, there goes the shot. I saw that shot coming a, long, a mile away though. Now you have these riflemen moving around. Did he, did he tech stickies yet? He did not tech stickies. The one problem with the roads on Angleville is that everyone who's a, at least a semi-decent player will always keep their vehicles off roads. Roads are too easy to get, to, are too easily commonly uh, mined, minefields for uh, people to actually sit there and reliably put a unit on a road. Let alone, let alone infantry. Infantry will de vehicles if vehicles aren't going on roads, infantry definitely won't be going on roads. He has these engineers. Ooh. Panzer Grenadiers did hit a mine, though. They can only detect mines when they're uh, in when they're not moving. So Panzer Grenadiers are still susceptible to mines. It's an interesting opening. He only went for uh, three rifles. Well, no, th yeah, three rifles. He went. F no, he did go four rifles. He did go four rifles. He went four rifles, and now he's got sticky bombs, and he has his jeeps. So that's five tier one units. And now I think he's probably going to go ahead and. He he did get he did tech to getting his uh, supply yard, so he can tech to go straight for the tank depot. So he is sticking around the the, the location that I would stick. And he went infantry doctrine though. Infantry doctrine not too great against Panzer Elite. Uh, even though Rangers do have elite armor, so they can match a Pigren or a Luftwaffe doctrine squad. He's not he didn't his opponent didn't go Luftwaffe doctrine. His opponent went um his opponent went uh, scorched earth. Infantry doesn't really work against that. And we have a grenade, a incendiary grenade, dropped on those riflemen right there. Incendiary grenades do leave fire, obviously, and that fire can do DPS over time. Now some mines placed right there, and those Panzer grenades are going to walk right over it. Or not, they're just going to... They're going to notice it. They're going to notice the mine, and then they're going to stand next to it, and then they're going to actually hit it. Then they're going to shoot at it. Watch. Either they'll shoot at it, or he'll forget about it, and then he'll keep running because he doesn't remember that there's a mine. And there he goes! He actually forgot that there was a mine there and lost the man on that squad. That's 45 manpower down the drain. While a mine only costs 25 munitions. Oh, another mine was hit. 
Right. This is interesting. He's using these mines effectively enough to actually take out these Panzergrenadiers, but he's not using his riflemen. He keeps losing. He kept losing engineers, and if he had used flamer engines instead of using these mines, he actually could have already beaten this Panzer Elite player already. Because he's because he didn't build enough units to honestly warrant to honestly warrant all these mines. I think he meant for the mines to really help against the uh, armored cars, but really in the long run, not very helpful. It's not been helpful to him, and that's the problem. He he he's been he used them for that, but otherwise he's not he's not getting much he's not getting much bang for his buck, shall I say? Field repair on the jeep, but why here and not in the base where it's safe? And I have these riflemen going in here, but he knows his opponent has the ability, and there goes the jeep, which is why you don't go again, don't go with that. But he knows his opponent has the ability to throw incendiary grenades, so why would you go inside of a building like that? At least, at least when you know that the squads probably haven't thrown their incendiary grenades. Panzer Elite do have the ability to get defensive, um, was it defensive operations, which then gives them the ability to, because their abilities cost so much. Uh, at terms of time, they 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 take a long time to recharge, and he still hasn't gotten a triage for his uh, rifleman yet. And he went for a staghound armored car, so he went tier three uh, to try and fight these armored cars. And oh, those riflemen are going to get caught right off guard when that mine doesn't get placed. He shouldn't have tried to cap while his um rifle. He should have held off on capping while his riflemen were building that mine because he actually would have gotten those armored cars pretty well. Oop, but there goes a sticky bomb. That armored car is toast. That was a vet one defensive armored car. Good shot from him. That's a very that was very good. Now this staghound, if you can get this staghound to do some damage, like it's like it says whenever it comes out of the base, uh it can actually take most definitely take out that guy. And he stunned it. Uh that was interesting. But then he but then um he activates the uh he activates the overdrive or yeah, flank speed or whatever. He activates overdrive in order to get out of there. That was a nice shot though. He almost killed the uh he almost killed it. This is good from the Ameri from uh Joe. Joe's actually uh turned the turned my opinion of Mines versus Panzer Lee around in the long run. His opponent went for a straight Panzer Panzer Grenadier to mar to armored car. Now he's getting martyrs to try and make ant AT, but just like most of just like most things from the Panzer Elite, it's just a giant piece of scrap metal with a dick on its face. <clears throat> and so now these martyrs are going to keep the staghound at bay. He's doing pretty well. I'm not going to encourage this type of play. I don't think it's really helpful in the long run, but he's doing pretty well uh, at this point. But he he might be a he's probably a better level player than even I, than myself or anyone I know. Uh, another armored car out of the. Panzer Jaeger command, probably because he lost the other, due to him lo losing the other one, and this one's getting repaired on the field. Now we have a major blob of rifles and engineers, and those engineers are about to pop those flamers on those Panzer Grenadiers. This is going to be very good if he can get this timing just right. As long as he get, as long as he gets in there and does some early damage, and there goes the flamer pop. Now he just has to go in there and oh, wow, that was, that was uh, that was pretty bad. First off, he, he retreated too early. He shouldn't have retreated. First off, he retreated too early, and then on top of that, he ran right into uh, MP44 Pegrens. Not a very good decision. Now, because he knows that that martyr is not there because it would have shot, he should go ahead and move this, this T-17 right up there. Now, he had these riflemen building mines over here. So he went to defensive operations, so he's probably going for the off-map. The only thing is that now he doesn't really have any fuel. He does have this plus 16 fuel now, so now he has plus 16. Ooh! That mine on the road actually did help! I don't know why he didn't decide to not go on the road. That's what most people do, is not go on the road. But hey, whatever. Why is that T-17 shooting there? You're not in the thick of anything. You know? You're shooting at a wall. I think he's shooting at the wall, so that way he can't be funneled. Probably also because he wanted to get the T-17 through the door. Now I have a forward barracks right there near um near Joe's cutoff from Armo King. This is going to be an interesting forward barracks because now he's going to have to decap that forward barracks in order to stop it. Uh, Panzer Elite forward barracks is actually different than the American than the American or the German forward barracks. And oh, 
There goes the T-17, stunning the Martyr three. Now those riflemen inside the building are going to get absolutely raped if they don't get out of there because there's flames on the building. And on the other side of the map, the two s there are two Pegren squads inside of there. Now this, mar this T-17 is circle strafing, and there's another T-17 that's sitting there and trying to get in some nice, some nice damage on this martyr. I think rifleman went down. Yeah, a rifle squad went down on retreat. Uh, this martyr can do can kill this T-17. And oh, there's a double martyr. Double mar double T-17s could kill a martyr because they're armored cars, but double martyrs can kill T-17s any day of the week. T-17s aren't that great. Their usability is very hit or miss. And ooh, that T-17 got stuck. That other one might get away. Sticky bomb that other one. Sticky bomb that one. Sticky bomb the T-17 armored car and you would have won. One T-17 armored car versus two staghounds never would win. Would never win. Good. He sticky bombed it late. He sticky bombed it a bit late, but he still sticky bombed it. Destroyed engine on the T-17 armored car. Probably was trying to. Probably moved. I don't know why he moved it actually. Oof. But there goes that T. No, that T. Destroyed engine on the uh, martyr. I don't know why he moved that T-17 armored car into the arc range of the other one, though. That that martyr is going to live. That's the sad thing about. Ooh! Hoo -hoo. Wow! Uh, the the engineer actually killed T the uh, the martyr. He deserved that field promotion. That's uh, not something you see every day. You don't see you don't see engineers killing stuff like that. Sad thing is, he lost both of those T seven. He lost one of those T seventeen. The other one was very, very heavily damaged. It didn't even get a vet strike. Now he wants to turn that T seventeen around because obviously Armo King does not care if he loses this martyr. So he's trying to go in there for a quick attack. He has some. Oh, he forgot about those. These armored cars could be deadly. Looks like we're going for it. Looks like he's going for a base rush on that T-17. Turn that T-17 around. That T-17 is going to get absolutely butt fucked if he does not get out of there. Go ahead and attack those those armored cars, killing those armored cars and killing basically everything. Good job that he got that um AT gun because AT gun will basically make sure that he has to move this arm this martyr if he wants to keep it. Repair the T-17 in battle. Repair the T-17. Oh, out of control. He should have he should have armor piercing round that uh that ar that that martyr that martyr's gonna get away and that's the sad part. Bars popped for the rifleman, but why bars I'll never but why bars I'll never know because bars don't really do much of anything against that. Now that martyr is probably dead, or the AT gun could just fire to the complete left of it in front of it. Sure, that's fine. Main gun destroyed on that martyr. That martyr is toast. Uh, the the yeah, destroyed engine, dead, dead martyr. It's revenge. It's it's got it's getting revenge for its T17 armored car friend. But there's an, there's a third martyr out. And while bars are great and all, bars won't do much against these uh Panzer Grenadiers. Panzer Grenadiers don't take much damage from bars, and flamers don't do shit against the armored cars. To be really honest. Double stickies on that armored car though. It's defensive though, so it will die. Um. Yeah. Dead armored car. Anyway. AT gun opens up on that third martyr. I think they put a mine down right there. I'm not even sure. We have a flamer NG that's attacking those guys. Double grenade, double flamer, flame incendiary grenades from those Panzer Grenadiers though. Force the riflemen off. Very good play from uh, Joe there. He actually got his um, he kept his cu he 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 lost his cutoff early in the game, but he's gotten it. He's basically gotten it back in full force, and he's killed a lot of pegrins in the long run. Uh, he did get an AT gun, which also helped kill most of the martyrs and most of the most of the vehicular threat that was to his units. Now here's comes some another T17. This T-17 is now going to be going out unabated because nothing can really fight it. This Martyr is completely unhealed. 
these riflemen are going to at least do some damage to, to the grin, to the pegrins. Pegrins don't take a lot of damage from bars, but they take more. They take more than enough to at least do some to at least do something. Now he has to get rid of his 4 HQ though. As long as he has a 4 HQ, this pegrins will not will not lose. They will always win the fight because they can always just reinforce. Now these flamer engines moving up on these pegrins. This is going to be good if he can get those flamer engines to move up on the pegrins, and he has a T17 for a artillery-ish type backup, like you know vehicular backup. As long as he gets those flamer engines, and they're vet one flamer engines, so they're going to do more damage. Now those pegrins did lose their cover, so now they're going to have to get out of there. And he got a vet two uh, flamer engine, very useful. Now he's taking back most of the map, and he has this T-17 and this AT gun. Although this AT gun is low on health, so he should probably move it back to the triage. You can actually do that. Uh, re, 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 uh, wasn't replenish the health of AT guns, uh, crew members if you move them back. Interesting how um how Joe has turned this match back around. He's using all three. He's using all four. T well, he's at least using all three of the first of the first. He's using the first three tiers of American units, and he's uh, keeping his Panzer Elite uh, opponent at bay. Now that he decapped that, he, he decapped this fuel. His opponent doesn't know, can't actually see that he's putting mines down. So that's a very nice uh, uh, strategy from him. Now there are some assault infantry out. That means that he's actually. That means that uh, the more likely means that armor that Armo King is actually getting desperate in the in the long run because Armo King is actually uh, having to get is getting if he's getting assault infantry that means that he's running low on actual units he's probably not he probably doesn't have enough to actually fight off this American force that he's having to deal with now the T-17 is debatably good because in the long run he should probably move those riflemen away from that because if those guys move up and they and they activate that mine with those riflemen there that's going to be bad but um T-17 is debatably useful because it doesn't really get a good defensive capability until it gets its, um, Vet 1 stripe, because, oh, wow, he mo he must have met, he, he somehow noticed the mine, I can't believe he did, but, uh, they, it doesn't get, its fir until it gets its first, uh, infantry stripe, it doesn't get sandbags, which are its defensive, view which is our, its defensive ability. Now these flamers, flamers aren't being put on these engineers. He's actually getting more mines on the road, probably to stop any more armored car or martyr spam. We have another cat now. It's probably to cap more of the map. Another flamer incendiary grenade dropped by those uh, pegrins. Now those riflemen have to move back because they're low, they're low on health because they didn't walk out. I don't know why they didn't leave. Uh, now some more riflemen back at, running back out to try and attack. Some f engineers over here capping. Mine placed right there, nicely placed. Engineers now engineers don't gain the same type of uh, they don't gain the same type of bonuses that um that Ameri that uh, normal American infantry do. Engineers um don't really gain anything except for like damage buffs to their weapons when they gain veterancy. That's why, but they get high high damage buffs because ven engineers don't usually get veterancy that high. That's oh, a vet three. Vet three engineers are very deadly to Panzer Elite, especially that flamers. Now these engineers are killing this Ketan. They're trying to at least. Uh, those Pegrans are coming up to try and save it, but it's no point to save the Ketan because the Ketan is such a low costing, low effective unit in the long run. Uh, but the but the engineers do get away, and so the Ketan took a lot of damage, and you did not cap your cutoff back. And all you got was a decap. That's not really useful. We have Panther Battle Group out. That means that his that um, Armo King has therefore gotten every single upgrade for Panzer Grenadiers. Let's say, did they activate the mine? A lot of people think Panther Battle Group can actually uh, defeat, can actually you know defeat Americans in the long run. They can't. Panther Battle Group is a useless ability in in some cases. It depends on how your economy is doing. Which I can only assume the Panther Battle Group was a was a choice to try and be awesome and try and you know deal and try and deal with the. Uh, the American units that were overtaking basically the entirety of the map, because these bars are actually doing pretty good damage against these pegrins. Now, bars, while they're not very good against Panzer Elite, 
Bars can actually do pretty good damage in the long run when you start giving Vet. When you get Vet on your units and you can actually start doing more damage with them, Bars do a lot. Um, now, like, for example, this these Bars, if they, got, if they were Vet 2 and they were Bars, those Bars would be killing those Panzer Elite. Now they lost that uh T he lost that T seventeen, but that Panther battle group is down on health. That first Panther is actually really really low. Uh, probably getting attacked by Grin by bazookas and all of that. And actually, speaking of Vet two, these rifles did reach Vet two from killing some people. We have another AT gun out, double AT gun versus these uh mar this martyr Panther Panther combo will actually kill the Panther Panther combo and the martyr. If these T-17s can be used effectively to block off the martyr and the T and the other uh, vehicles from attacking them, right now it's kind of just a standstill at the moment. Uh, both players probably looking at what they have left in order to see what they can do to properly if to to effectively fight the other one. Uh, these Panthers are getting repaired. This martyr is kind of just looking off into the distance, wondering about his life uh, in the army. I assume that these engineers, yeah, they did place another mine, probably to keep the Panthers at bay. He back to Weapon Support Center. Um, he's probably going to go for a sniper to start trying to do some more damage to these Pegrens because he notices that they have tank busters. I think I saw tank busters. Those Vetsu rifles might go down and... Oh, there's one man! Run away, run away. Good, he ran away. He might get away. A stray bullet did not kill him. That happens so often to me, I was so worried about it. Joe did get away with his Vetsu rifles with bars. No bars were lost. Only one man, only like two, three guys were left, were lost. He did get the, he did not get the decap on it. It's still Armo Kings. That's so sad. I thought he actually did. I'm pretty sure he did. I thought I saw him get the decap. That T-17 should probably go ahead and help its rifle buddies. It did get another kill, though. Here comes the Martyr to try and til kill the T-17, and there go the sandbags. Sandbags on the T-17. As you now see, the T-17 now has a different look. Sandbags on it. The sandbags on the T-17 make it much more durable and defensive, and it actually gives it its mu it actually makes it a much more viable unit compared to its M8 counterpart. Uh, that's the only problem that I've always had with the T-17 is that it takes so long to give it sandbags uh, to make it defensive. Now that it's defensive, it can actually take that martyr on head well not head on because it's still it's still an armored car, but it can now take that martyr on much easier than it could before when it was unsandbagged. Just thought I mentioned that. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and look at uh, Armo King. Just look at his economy. He now has the Panther Battle Group ability. Uh, two Panther attacks, two Panther tanks will arrive to support offensive operations. He doesn't seem to be using. He doesn't seem to be. He, I wonder if he's using his CPs correctly though, because he he got scorched earth. He probably got the ability to booby trap buildings and all that stuff. But I wonder if he's getting sector artillery or was waiting to get the amount of CPs for sector artillery at this point because sector artillery would help keep him keep the American at bay. But uh let's go ahead and continue on watching Joe's perspective. Joe actually has four CPs in the bank, so he can get and he did get a sniper out of the WSC like I thought he was. Joe actually does have enough CPs to get a um to get his off map combat group going. Or as Whoa! That bullet just like fl like pulled a wanted and just like flew off to the other direction. Didn't even hit anything. It's like got a sentient, <laughs> a sentient bullet, a sentient um shell from a T-17 armored car. It's this is why Panther Battle Group is not that great because Panther Battle Group it 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 really does kill your economy in the long run, and it's not a great thing to get because people think it helps save games. It really doesn't. Look at how look at where he is. Look at what's happened to um to Armo King. He can't move these Panthers. If he moves them up, he's going to get hit by two AT guns, probably with armor piercing rounds, because his opponent because uh Joe has enough uh, munitions for those to warrant getting those. 
Now he's moving those Panthers around over there to try and kill these engineers, and they snipe them. I think I was in the vetted ones. I guess the vetted ones kind of sort of sent those guys off. And the sniper is probably going around to try and kill some unwanted pegrins that were le that are left behind. I think Armo King is actually running low on uh, pegrins. He only has these two squads, this one squad over here, and this one squad. He hasn't gotten four-man squads or anything. He's keeping he's keeping his martyr with his ket with his ketten crad to help defend the ketten. He's keeping these two these uh pegrins over here to keep his ketten crad safe. Now these armored now these AT guns just decide to move up because basically. All of Armo King's force is on the left, while he's left to everything else undefended. Now he has double Panther battle group. I didn't even know you could do that, um, because I've never seen it happen twice. So he got double. So now he has four Panthers on the field, but that costs a thousand manpower. So that's probably why he doesn't have the. That's more than likely why he doesn't have the manpower to actually build units because he's been waiting to get those Panthers out for so long. So now four Panthers on the field, but they can't really do anything against those AT guns. They really could just rush the AT guns at this point, because really the AT guns, two AT guns can't really do much against these. So I don't really know why he's not doing it. Ooh, damaged engine on one of those Panthers. These riflemen are kind of in a dangerous situation. Another... Ooh! What got killed over here? Where did something die? I think another rifleman died somewhere. Didn't even notice. Either another rifleman or an engineer or something. These Panthers are very good at sniping units, I'll admit. Ooh, that one is very low health. <laughs> I wonder if that was armor-piercing rounds. These Panthers are really getting wrecked. Four Panthers and it's not really working out for, um... To be honest, it's not really working out for uh, Armo King. Now he's using that martyr to try and attack his attack his opponent's base. These rangers aren't gonna have it. They're running in to try and do some damage on this martyr. The scrap metal with a dick. Now here's where the problem of going scorched earth comes in. You don't get any call-ins. It's just like the American. Uh, it's just like the the. Ooh, wow. This isn't good for, uh... This isn't good. Oh, T-17. T- Oh, wow! Instantly came out of the ba- Came out of the side. Instantly got attacked. And then those- There goes those guys. Base rushes. Wow! Loses the rifle and is about to lose the mortar that he just got. He got T-17, mortar, and he got a, um an AT gun. Now he's losing everything. That that off map combat group was not warranted at that time. He should have waited. He should have waited till his um till the till the units were in his base before he actually went and got it. Now he's losing everything in his base. And he lost his cutoff earlier, so now he's losing every now he's losing it. Armo King is I, I wanna say it's a it is a bit of a dick move of Armo King, if I'm completely honest, to do that. Um, to sit there and, and basically do that to to his opponent, but it's completely viable for the sense of uh, that he could do it, that he could do it, and that he had the right to do it because, to be completely honest, in the long run, Joe really should have paid more attention to what he was doing in the other, in, to what Armo was doing on the other side of the map. He should have kept that sniper in his base as well for the sake of it. I don't really know why this VP always keeps turning yellow. J 
Joe is producing something out of the base. I guess he's hoping to get... Oh, there he, there he goes. He's getting another rifle out. Makes sense. He lost his engineer. He lost his rangers and another and like two other rifle and like another rifle. So he's l he's losing most of the map. He lost most of the right hand of the left hand side, and now he has a martyr right outside of his base. If I'm completely honest, he could rush that martyr really quickly uh, if he just gets. Ooh, here come the Panthers. They're all moving out with their pegrins. <sighs> Interesting enough. You have another rifle squad out. I think that Ketten was going for a quick base base scout. Here come the Panthers. They're all moving in. I think they're all going to go for a quick base rush of the uh, American's base. And the problem is, he has no off map. Uh, there is no off map. There is no on map. There are no call ins. Zip. Vet two on that on that uh, squad though. And they get to, and they throw a sticky on the martyr. They're probably gonna kill this martyr because it's a mobile. Now it's immobilizing. Yeah, there it goes. But here come the Panthers. They're just rolling up, and they're about to take up the Americans. They're just about to rape them. I was like, oh, grape the Americans. Ever seen the grapists? Yeah, they're about to do that to them. They're gonna sit up and they're gonna grab the Americans. And they're gonna rape them. I bet uh, Joe thinks he's not losing his nerve. That's the good thing. He's not losing his nerve here. He's keeping he's keeping cool. But he ooh he lost his AT gun. I think he's trying he's probably trying to go for AP for eight AP armor piercing rounds there. Now he's losing all of his units. His squads are dying off really quickly because he's being base rushed. He should probably move everything back to base like he is now. He probably should have done that a while ago. And there's a vet three offensive squad, so that's gonna kill his engineer. They aren't going to last much longer. Wow. Did that engineer actually live? He lived. But he kept it, He kept his vet too, but he lost his flames. <laughs> wow. That's um quite an interesting glitch. He's just losing his base. This is such a sad... Stad, this is a sad state of affairs for... Um, for him, let's go ahead and move forward. Let's see if he gets if he if he just gets base pinned and base rushed, and this is it for him, or if he actually gets to save himself. Oh, we got forward barracks. Ooh, vet two on that on that uh, T17 armored car. He did lose all of his buildings, though, and his and his base. Oof! Wow. Lost his weapon crew. That panther has been left. <laughs> that panther was left. <laughs> he's the one that he's the one that they left behind. <laughs> Now he has these engineers building up his base again. Vet 2 still. That T-17 has been living for a long while and has actually been doing a lot of damage. More damage than I thought it was going to do. He made a secondary... Oh, he killed a Pegrin. Hummel self-propelled artillery, that's something that you can get in the Scorched Earth Tactics. Artillery support is waiting to get go. Now he's trying to off-map combat, now he's trying to off-map artillery that, um, those Panthers. Joe has actually done pretty well. I'll give him that. He's done really well for being for being in a shitty position. <laughs> he's dealing. He's t he took what he got. He was given. A, he 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 got his hand got his his hand got shat on, but he took what he had, and he's been working around it. Killing these panthers off. He's almost killed an entire group. 
Now this Hummel is going to be do going to be a bit of a pain in the ass though, because it is the on map of this of this game for uh, Panzer Elite. The sniper actually did get that one, probably killing some Pegrins. If it kills that, if it if it if he worked it out, yeah, there he goes. Now that now that um Panther's probably trying to go after, it's probably chasing after that some down. If he kills this, if he kills that vet, that vet three offensive infantry squad, that is going to be a major blow to Armo King's army, and that will really, really put a damper on his day. <laughs> if I'm completely honest. Ooh, another shot. If he had just waited one more shot, he could have killed them. Oh, but he might run on that mine. Might not. Come on. Shoot at that guy! Shoot at that guy! Shoot at that guy! Oh my god. Why he didn't just sit? He could have lost the sniper, yeah, but... I would have just stayed in there just to kill the, the Vet 3 offensive infantry squad. That would have been helpful. Damn, that's... This is a sad state of affairs for Joe. He he's sticking around though. He's sticking he he's sticking to his guns. He's got what whatever he's got left. He's keep he's keeping he's sticking with it. Oh, suppressive fire on those um on those pegrins. I think it's Joe's kept his victory point. Why did he stop shooting at them? Oh, he's got in a second. He's got another bar to try and save it. But oh wow, those riflemen got totally pasted. He needs to move that squad like yesterday before they open up on them. Get he's got oh vet two on that um sniper that's very nice. Sniper's probably going to take take out that last P grin if he gets a nice shot off. No, he doesn't. Oh, but we do have some more on map. Probably kill that sniper off. Yep, right where the sniper was. <laughs> Just like I thought. He's, he uh, he decloaked the sniper just to move it a bit faster from that location, so that way a straight shot wouldn't hit him. These Panthers are still kind of beaten up, though. Beaten up and just kind of there. There is an on map. I think he I think Joe is looking to get use that on map to attack his um to attack the Panthers. One is vet one um offensive and one is vet two is vet one defensive, so it does have some pretty nice defenses. Right. Like, ooh, nice shot from that, uh, nice, nice hit from that grenade, from that, uh, thing. It's too bad it didn't kill a guy, because then that sniper would have actually, uh, it would have properly, properly taken out that, um, that Pegrin. Now that Pegrin will probably die. <laughs> if I completely honest, that Pegrin will probably get shot on retreat. Because he's in a straight line. Doesn't get shot. Dang. Oh, because the sniper was didn't want to get shot off, didn't want to kill. He didn't want to lose his sniper right there. It's a very nice decision. Panthers are still hurting. These vet, wow, vet two offensive and vet three offensive MP40 Pegrins. This T17 is still alive, and that engineer is barely is the only thing keeping those Pegrins from getting rid of that Ford HQ and basically calling it a GG right there. He'd much rather lose that engine, that engineer, and get some nice shots off on those pegrins than lose, than lose the entire, than lose that building. I don't know why he didn't re give the flamer to those engineers. I bet he, I bet the engineers was kind of bugged in the end of the day, and that's what really happened was that the bug ended up messing them up. Another more on map at where the sniper was. He really wants to kill that sniper. <laughs> he really wants to kill that sniper. Oh shoot! And he made an armored car just to probably kill it as well. He knocked out a weapon crew. Very sad day for the American. 
up, but that T-17 is blocking off that armored car, but the T-17 doesn't seem to be doing a lot of damage to it. Tanks do a lot of damage to armored cars, but I don't think these guys do. Off-map combat group, M10, rifle, 30 cal, and another anti-tank gun. I think that actually works for uh, Joe's composition at the moment. Joe really needs some AT at the moment, and that armored car is, and that um, AT gun is really what he needs at the time at this moment, because uh, his opponent's been killing all of his AT guns, destroying them straight. This M10 tank destroyer is going to be helpful as well because it can actually take, it can actually effectively take out that armored car. Now I think, I think Armo King, I think what he's doing here is he's trying to destroy the Ford HQ because he can't, he knows he can't actually take it. And wow, all of those are MP40s. That's um, bit of a dick move because uh, MP40s can do a lot of damage, but you know, especially when they're offensive. But hey, you know, whatever flows your boat. Now I I think he knows he can't take the building, so he's going to try to destroy it to do more damage. Now these riflemen are getting shredded, and ooh, vet too because they killed. A oh wow, those AT guns did a lot of damage. They killed a Panther and they killed the um the armored car. That means that that's fewer Panther for the from the from the Panther group, and now this oh there goes that this sniper probably will open up on these guys, and that MG is really helping out keeping these Pegrens down. Wow, Armo King, I am so glad that you find this boring. Well, he really oh. That's I, I don't believe it's homosexual at all to do one v ones. I love one v ones. And wow, a vet three infantry squad. <laughs> vet three. That's a that's a GG and a forward reinforcement point. Yeah. All right then. Here we go. Some on map on those uh riflemen capping. I think it was on map. I assume it was on map. It's not really shooting anymore. Sector artillery. I believe, yeah, that is sector artillery right there on that sector. Basically, this entire sector is now a death a death zone if any units walk into it. But luckily enough, Joe is a competent enough player to know to not actually sit there and lose his vet three squad trying to cap a point. Right, but also sector artillery basically means that this entire area dead zone. If a unit is caught walking in that area for for until this time or until the ne for the next 80 seconds that unit is officially dead it's it's to keep the it's to keep the american at bay at the at the best really at this point armo king is really knowing he really knows that he's well uh, well no armo king doesn't really know anything he's kind of just being a dick about it but armo king probably know probably knows to an extent that he uh that he can't actually sit there and keep holding on to this VP up here, he's going to lose out because he's lost his he's lost like basically an entire battle group, Panther battle group, and then he's losing Pegrens left and right. He lost a Pegren and gave gave the American a Vet two squad, a Vet three squad. I mean, these Vet zero rifles are actually tearing up that Pegren pretty well. But now these Vet three Pegrens will actually kill them off. Yeah, I think he was. Please move that AT gun. Please don't move that AT gun. Please, my Christ. That M10 is staying around to try and defend that AT gun, which is good. Why would you move? Don't move him in front of the sniper. Sniper is what he wants to kill. I think he knows that the sector artillery is about to end. He's probably counted it out. The sector artillery is about to end in like five seconds. Armor King's also holding on to a lot of resources, shall I say. Wow, he almost killed that grand there, P grand there. This Vet Three rifle squad is on five men at the moment, and wow, they did kill that um that M10 over here down at the south. I, I missed that. Uh, that's sad. If that M10 was actually still alive, he could have actually used it with these rifles and this T17 to actually you know do some damage. But the M10 is now dead. Now this is his only form of tank, and his he has no other form of AT. This is why he's probably keeping this uh. If I'm completely honest, this is probably why he's keeping this T-17 alive for so long. He's probably not trying to lose it. Because if he loses it, that's his only real AT. Okay, here's an all-in from, um... Here's an all-in from Armo King. Two... 
Wow. Two in to two total uh two Panther battle groups equivalent two Panther battle groups attacking this uh this base again another base harassment because he's bored out of his mind apparently don't know why he's playing then if he's bored out of his mind in a one v one but hey whatever. Yeah, Rifles, you are in trouble. You're a vet 3. Alright, that's one C-17. Hummelbug? GG. And Armo King died. As in, he dropped. <laughs> Overall, the match um, match was very, very good. Uh, our, Joe kept his nerve throughout the entire match, and I will give him that, that he kept his nerve. Uh, Armo King, bit of a dick. Uh, if I'm completely honest, the way that he dealt with the fact that he was bored, quote-unquote, with the 1v1s, he's bored out of his mind. Uh, he did pull an all-in with the armor, with the... Armor, with the with whatever these are, this Panther Battle Groups. He did get, th what, th three of them? Three Panther Battle Groups. And Panther Battle Groups do effectively ruin your economy. I do like how Armo King did dr do the base rush, though. You know, I do think it was a bit of a dick move in the long run. I do like how he did it and caused uh, Joe to have to basically use low amounts of uh, units and basically cut him off for a long time but Joe got all of his units uh, upgrades early on so he didn't really have to worry about it now Armo King <laughs> Armo King in the long run he did play well he did play very very well uh, he caused Joe to have to deal with a lot of things that he didn't want to deal with so very good from the from the Panzerly player but I think in the long run if I had to be rooting for anyone throughout the entire match it had to be Joe because Joe did actually play the game well he kept well he did well but that's my opinion. Now you might think that Armo King did well with his base rushes. I don't really think base rushes prove dick all in a 1v1. Really, I don't really think they prove anything. I think they just prove that you just have more units or you have tanks. And what and base rushes of American bases from Panzer Elite doesn't surprise me anymore because base rushes of Pans of Americans from Panzer Elite is a very com was a very common thing that they actually made a thread on game replays about. Uh, in the American Strategies forum. If you check, there's actually a little thing about fighting Panzer Elite, fighting the base rush. Because base rushes are very common because their tanks can actually deal with the MGs in the base, kill those off, then all of a sudden all these Pegrins are in your base. So, yeah. Overall, though, very good match. Uh, very lengthy match, 54 minutes, 57 seconds. It's a very nice match to end uh, the stream on. <laughs> I will go ahead and I am going to see you all later. I might actually do more casts like this late at another date <coughs> uh, when I actually get a chance. But um, thanks for watching and have a nice day.